Um, I would say it really depends on the person. Like, there's a lot of people that are lucky out there to have like healthy and romantic relationships, where like others maybe not. And a solution to this would be, hmm, maybe people getting out of their shell and like talking to people and going on dates. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it the client like romance, like being romantic or couple? I'm not sure. I, is I chivalry dead? Is that what it is? Okay. Uh, and did women kill it? I mean, part of it, yes, I think so. I think guys are kind of scared because women did become kind of rough. In Quebec, like, women are rough, men. Like, it's it's almost, like, inversed. The, uh, the, the worlds are reversed, and, like, men don't really go towards women because women just kind of, like, they're rough. They're rough. The uh, French-Canadian um, women, I'm telling you. Like, uh-huh. Yeah, they're t- it's tough out there, the Quebecois. Yeah, it's... Uh, With their... But uh, the poutine? is it the poutine? poutine? You think that's what did it to the women? The I don't poutine? think that's the poutine, but poutine is did some really Canadian good things, bacon? though. Canadian bacon did yeah. some amazing things, I think. You think it's Trudeau, like his fault? <sighs> like Trudeau started... is at fault for <laughs> many, but let's not. Yeah. But yeah, he, ugh, don't yeah. even talk about this. But okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. part of it is like the. Yeah. Is chivalry dead? I think I could only like say it from a perspective. I, I feel like my scope of the dating life is probably pretty, I would say small, um, just because I've been in the same community for years, but I'd say it's declining. It's still here, but it, there's not a lot of uh, men that are doing like typical chivalry things. So, yeah, it's at a decline. I the feel. same community, like the Pokemon like card OC, collection? Like, well, I'm, like, I'm from I mean, OC, so... Uh, um, you mean the place that's right next to LA, like the biggest metropolitan area in the country? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough out there in yeah. the greater metro LA area. 10 million plus people, it's hard. It's very secluded. Basically in the, in the forest out there in Orange County. Don't look at me that way. You're in the forest. You're in the sticks. No, OC suburban. Like it's I, like it, it's. I know. I'm being sarcastic. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the rural, the rural parts of Orange County. Yeah. Are there rural parts of? We're in the Orange County. We're, we're in the skies. Orange County is pretty. Uh, isn't it pretty Republican? Mm-hmm. So you're a Trump supporter, right? Um. No, I don't. I don't want to disclose that because, like, again. It's okay. Like, you can do it. No, I okay. I don't I need to like You're like a Bernie bro. No, cuz I feel like Kanye. I, no. Oh, okay, my bad. Go ahead. No, I just feel like I need to do more research on like stances before I even like say anything cuz Yeah. Um, Who are you voting for? I'm not disclosing. All right. Okay. All right. Uh is chivalry dead? Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean so okay, hang on. I just want I just want to So you're voting for Kamala Harris. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I think I might forget the date to vote because I tend to forget certain things. Awesome. Yes. That's actually good. I'm, I'm glad. If it, but if if you did know the date to vote, uh, you'd be voting poison. for Kamala, right? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. If no. it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. She's gonna write in Timothy Chalamet for president. Mm. Wait, he's British. Never mind. And he's not he's thirty. Not British. He's not. He's from New York. I thought he was born no, in England. I'm. I'm pretty sure he's British. Timothy Chalamet. I. I, I don't think so. Well, he's. Ah, okay. I don't. Whatever. Um. Okay. Uh. What about you? Is chivalry dead? Well, so the question that was asked: Are we like kind of grouping romance and chivalry? <laughs> like sure, I guess. I feel that romance is on a decline, but with chivalry, chivalry as well, it is declining, but it's almost, it has potential to be revived. It's still mm. somewhere. I think. Yeah, I mean, it, it's somewhere. It is. 
it's gone. That's where it is. That's the somewhere that it is is gone. Hmm. Your your thoughts, go ahead. Um, yeah, it's definitely declining, both romance and surely. Um, I blame social media for that mm. and hookup culture and people feeling like they always need to put up a front. I think there's uh, not a lot of authentic authenticity left. And sure. that's a problem. Emma, what about you? I think it's very well alive. Hmm, okay. All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to get through some of my notes here. Irene, you do the tarot cards thing. You describe yourself as the goddess of peace. So, okay, let me explain that so it's not like... Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, I'm being um, narcissistic card, or whatever. Yeah. My, I, my name, Irene, actually, the definition of it is derived from the Greek goddess of peace. So I mm. used that for my username. Do you consider yourself a goddess? I don't. Okay. Um, and then on your TikTok, you're a Sagittarius, Gemini, and a Pisces, like a three or whatever. The fuck. So there's like um, there's little symbols. A lot of people kind of get confused. I guess it's not that noticeable, but it's saying I'm Sagittarius Sun, Gemini Moon, and Pisces Rising. That's beautiful. Thank you. I have no idea what that means. I can explain. That's um. <laughs> yeah, <I don't. laughs> Eh, you know. uh, you were on uh, Fresh and Fit. Yes, we both were. Both you, you were sitting right next to Myron. Mm -hmm. Question, very important question. Did you or did you not sniff his chair when he got up? Um, I did not. That's a lie. Just kidding. Okay. Um, did you guys say anything on what, that? What, what, wait. So, what? 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 Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Don't lie. Yes, oh, you yeah, did. You me. Oh my gosh. Like after the cameras were off, though. Like yeah, you wouldn't you dare me. like let that shit be caught on camera. I would never. But like you definitely like you. It's just between us. Okay. I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> did it smell like the Justin Bieber fragrance, or is it more like Aqua di Gio? Did I say that right? That mm. Giorgio Armani, the one. Maybe it's very popular. Like Dolce and Gabbana. More like, like Dolce. Okay, all right, just checking. Okay, well, chat's saying you did. The chat says you did. The chat says camera. you did. Okay, well, that's crazy. It's, you not, it's, it's unanimous between two chats that you did this. So. Uh, did you guys get into uh, any debates on that show? Did you guys have any back, good back and forth, you two, on that one? Or did you just sit there and, like, just... There was a lot of chaos that kind of yeah. prevented us from Yeah, debating. because a lot of mm. people were getting really emotional, and mm -hmm. it was just... Mm. You know, hard to state opinions, but I actually been on Fresh and Fit three times. Three times. Yeah, three oh, times. Oh wow, the Patrick. Okay, cool. Good times. Good times. Um, but that specific episode, no. I mean, a little bit. We we got to yeah. um, talk a lot about like femininity and masculinity, mm -hmm. and we already know okay. Myron's take on that. So sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll get through the rest of the notes. Actually, you know what? Before we get into the notes, I have to bring it back to, uh, let's see. Hmm. I did have a question. Um, what should men do when it comes to dating? For example, you might say men should pay for first dates, men should open the car door, men should bring you flowers, whatever it is. Maybe you agree with that, maybe you don't. But uh, what should men do when it comes to dating? I would say they would have to plan dates. I think that's really important. Plan dates. Plan dates. Um, to be a provider. Mm -hmm. um, provider. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also like show like effort. Effort. Yeah. Okay. Effort. And um, yeah. That's pretty much it. All right. What about you? Can we open the door? <clears throat> uh, I don't have any... Sh what? Oh. I don't have any uh, shoulds per se. Like, I think every couple creates, like, their own synergy. But I think... And it, uh, not specific to men or, you know, I just think you need to have co good communication. You have to be able to, I mean, minimally manage your emotions and be able to know yourself. And I think you should... Okay, I guess that's a should. But again, for men and women, you should find a way to be somewhat fulfilled with your life. 
on an individual level before. But I'm saying more like gendered. Yeah, gender roles. Like I don't, I don't know. I don't feel entitled to anything particularly. Repeal the 19th amendment. Donated two hundred dollars. Damn. Ladies, you're so boring, painfully boring. Damn. Justify your right to vote. Uh, repeal the 19th. Uh, well, thank you for the TTS. Um, does anybody want to respond to that? The right to vote? I yeah. mean, we're or part the, of society. Or the accusations of being boring. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we might be. I don't know what you want to say. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Bro, just come on. Like, like, come on here and then talk. I'd love to see you talk. If you happen to be I mean, here. I'm on here right now if you'd like to have that argument. <laughs> but but just so you know, I have been instructed by the powers that be not to have that argument. So I'm not going to, but I just want to let you know at any future date, if you would like to have that argument, I'm willing to have it. All right, well, I guess back to the whole uh, what what should men do when it comes to dating? Yeah, like I said, I don't have any specific shirts, no. I think okay. like yeah. All right. What about you? Me. Uh, what should men do when it comes to dating? I think I kind of agree. I agree with you on that. It, in this sense. It, just one point of clarification. It's easier if you just say your own position instead of saying you okay. agree. Just my position is is um, like before you get into a relationship, I feel like men should pretty much be secure with themselves first. For even pursuing yeah but you can say this about women so i'm asking like what should men specifically do mm. what should men be what should they do so be good should, communicators shouldn't women also be good, good communicators well it seems like a lot of these things even in, ter in terms of like planning dates or even uh like giving gestures doing a lot of things could be things that both genders could do Okay. But men specifically, I think they could be pretty good listeners. Um, even if they're not going to fully understand, like, how a woman would, think, would, would feel, just listening in is, like, pretty good. So there's nothing exclusive, in your view, nothing exclusive that men should do when it comes to their gender expectations and dating protector provider lead they could protect they can I definitely, but should they they should okay i mean you're if if i'm i'm your woman then like protect me i'm you're obviously probably going to be um at least at least like slightly bigger right um yeah to the size that you could protect i'm i'm very small petite mm-hmm so you want the guy who's would protect you or yeah, capable of protecting protect you? Me, yes. Okay, and men should do that. They should protect their girlfriend. Do you I, think men have an equal expe expectation on women that the woman should protect them? No. Okay, so gendered expectation then. What about you? I personally appreciate chivalry, so mm -hmm. like those little things, like making sure the woman is on the inside when they're driving mm -hmm. by, like the cars. Sure and opening doors obviously and of mm -hmm. course if the man did ask to ask or plan the date i would appreciate them to pay for the meal or the dates mm -hmm. okay you know you said you want something that's you know not doesn't apply for both genders and i i can't think about it right now because i feel like the things that i wanted to mention like consistency and being a great communicator and just being straightforward about what you want i think both people should be able to do that so. Uh, anything for you, Emma? Uh, I think they should wear the pants and lead. Okay. All right. Um, and then let me ask you guys a question really quick here. So would you find fault in a woman if a woman said men should do X, Y, Z, should do X, Y, Z? So a woman says men should pay for first dates. Men should open car doors men should be willing to sacrifice themselves in some sort of self-defense situation they should take the bullet men should take the bullet would you object to if a woman said that would that be wrong of her to say that that men should pay for first dates is that is that wrong 
That's not wrong at all. Um, no, obje no objections. Okay. Pen, um, men should be paying, cooking, cleaning, taking care of kids. Men should? Uh, yeah, I get your little looks to the side. Oh, I just said little troll. <laughs> Congratulate. Yeah, okay. You know, I don't know, Brian. I don't know if you can let him off the hook. <laughs> Trolling. Healing my skin from boredom donated $200. These girls have the personality of a sex doll. I mean, it would be helpful with the flow of the conversation if you simply answered the question in good faith. So, I mean, is that actually your position or are you just going to cop to the troll? I would say um, women are allowed to say, like, all like for men to pay for dates and stuff like that. Okay, so are you walking back the men should cook and clean and take care of the household? Or No, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Okay, all right. Yeah, they're allowed to want that. Anybody's allowed to want what a, whatever they want. So no quarrel. No quarrel with men should do X, If that's Y, Z. what it's, if they want that, is that, if that's the, yeah, if that's what they want and then they have, they create that relationship and they have, they offer each other kind of that complimentary thing. Sure. Like, yeah. Any issue with a woman saying men should do this? Men should pay for first dates? Is that wrong? Mm. Up to that, I would say, like, if she wants it, then she can have it that way. But um, same goes for men, too. They Men could be, like, men, women should be submissive or women should be in this sense. You could think however you want to think. Um, it's based on, like, what you want. So I'm not really going to, like, say no. You can't have this. Techno Trooper donated $200. Ladies, would your parents be okay with you dating a guy that comes from a broken home? I like boring, it's peaceful. Uh, Techno Trooper, thank you for the TTS. Um, just show of hands, would your parents be would your parents be okay with you dating a guy that comes from a broken home? Show of hands. I mean... Okay. All right, there you have your answer. Thank you, Techno Trooper, for the TTS. Um, any objections to women saying men should do... Men should pay for first dates. I believe it's wrong under the circumstance that the woman who's stating that is not offering anything to the table either. Well, maybe she is. Then, no, I don't believe it's wrong. Okay. Yeah, if that works for both of them, you know, if it's communicated and this is the, their preferences and it works, then yeah, there's nothing wrong. Emma, what about you? Uh, no objection. No objection. Okay. And then, th then just my, fo my one follow-up to this is, is it wrong if a man says... Women should be submissive. Women should stay at home and take care of the kids. Women should cook. Women should clean. Is that sexist? Honestly, I would prefer it that way. I'll be able to cook and clean and then do everything. I don't think it's wrong, but I always wonder what you mean exactly when you say submissive. And I think a lot of women have trouble with that word. Mm -hmm. um, I don't particularly, but I never know what it means exactly because I think sometimes women hear like you need to shut up and do nothing and have no opinion and just say yes well, to everything. I, uh, Wait, luckily you're asking the exact right. Pro well, okay, go ahead, Brian. Sorry. Just, just before, I'll I'll let you get to that, but I want to just get the panel's answer on that. So, of the things I listed, if a man says you should do all those things, sexist. Um, it's just a matter of preference. I don't think it's like um, innately wrong to have like a preference or to feel and think the way you feel. Um, hopefully, that person could find. The person that agrees with those um, with those thoughts as well. You should be a politician. What about you? No. All right. Um, that wouldn't be for me, that person. But there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it's all about preferences. I think it's fair to say. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Andrew, do you want to have the exchange about the uh, being submissive thing? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to clarify what it means. It just means uh, you do what you're told. Yeah. That's what it means. No matter what. Well, no. I mean, it has to. It has to um, sync up with reason. So you do what you're told within reason. But um, but the thing is, is that uh, you know, quantifying reason. This is why. This is why when I talk about kind of 
whenever you have two two different consciousnesses which come into contact, one's basically necessarily always going to dominate the other. Um, in this case, I do think that men do tend to dominate relationships, and I even think that that's a good thing. I don't. I don't. Not only do I not think that's a bad thing, I think that that's how things ought to be. But you don't, you don't want like negotiations. Like you don't think that they're you. You don't want. Do like, generals? Do generals want to negotiate with colonels? I don't know. But does that no, mean that well, you want that in your relationship? No. Okay. Well, I mean the answer, answer is no. So like. I think, I think that if it, you can have tons of objections or needs or things that you want mm -hmm. from a submissive role uh, that you can ask for and, uh, and get, right, um, between, between two different individuals. This can be a business relationship. This can be anything, uh, not just a relationship. You can have two people who are in these roles. And one who's in the submissive role can request things within the confines of reason, and usually those things will be granted. The, the thing that happens, though, is that inside relationships, eventually two people come to an impasse. Who do we defer to? Well, that's the thing. I, I feel like there is, so let's say you have, a, you have a discussion, then it's like, for me, it's like the best idea should win. Yeah, but who gets to make the determination as to what the best idea is? Well, both so what people. Happens, what happens when you have an impasse, and, and it's kind of very pretentious, in fact, when people say, oh, I want a person who we're never going to have an impasse, or we're never going to have a, I think this is the way, and he thinks this is the way, or vice versa. That's every relationship that you're ever going to be in. There's going to be an impasse which comes up. Mm -hmm. The question is, who gets deferred to? So you think everything is within the confines of what should be, and so does he, right? Who 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 gets deferred to? Yeah, and I think that. When you say, well, those with the best idea. Yeah. It's like, well, who gets to determine that? You well, that's always in the discussion. I think like if you have a discussion with someone, then you both are yeah, like, yeah. You have yeah, the you... discussion. You think you're right, and he thinks he's right. Yeah. Well, then you. Yeah, you. <laughs> I don't. I don't think because you're the man, you it. it yeah, no, I don't believe that. Because you're the man, you automatically have the best idea or the best Well, somebody has got to be the tiebreaker, especially when there's kids involved, right? Somebody has yeah. to be the tiebreaker, especially when there's kids involved. You can't be at a perpetual impasse when it comes to your yeah. children's welfare, for instance, right? Somebody mm -hmm. has to be deferred to. So the, the question is, who gets deferred to? This is the, this is the great question, by the way, of the mm -hmm. 21st century. Mm -hmm. And this is the question feminism cannot answer. We must have children, and in order to have children, we're going to have to have men and women sleeping together. And in order to have good results with those children, usually those couples need to stay together long term, right? Or you're probably going to have bad results with the children. Every study on planet Earth confirms this. So what happens when we're inside of these relationships and feminism has taught you to be a strong, empowered, awesome, epic woman, boss babe, in tight leather who can take down 300-pound men? with machine guns, with nothing more than your 120 pound ninjutsu, and uh, you end up in an impasse, right? You end up in an impasse with your husband. Now this used to be codified into law. And so the codification in the law was, well, if there's an impasse, you're gonna have to defer to the husband. And now that's no longer law. And so now we end up in these, well, we can't make the decision because neither party will back down. So, so I, how do we solve that is kind of the great question of modernity. Yeah, I mean, I, f <laughs> I just feel like two grown-ups will naturally figure it out together, not yeah, just because funny. you Why choose, have a you know? I don't think it goes that way. I think naturally, like, they, they're both people you come up you will come up with like two people can't decide on gun control no but like you they come can't up decide you, on where they want to go eat together let's they say, can't I, decide the whole country's polarized 50 50 on abortion like we can't agree on basic things yeah. you think inside of relationships though somehow it's going to just naturally occur like it isn't that kind of pie in the sky uh you know kind of silly thing in a way no i think sometimes like uh because you you trust your partner and you're like, you know what? Okay, we're gonna try your way. And then another impasse is gonna be, okay, let's gonna try, <coughs> we're gonna try the other way. Like, it's, oh, it's wait, a wait, mutual thing. Wait, wait, that requires a concession. That requires a concession. We'll try it your yeah, way. Yeah, but I think the concession sometimes gonna be from the woman, sometimes the concession's gonna be from the man. Yeah, like, the man you know, says, let's say. Well, okay, but here's the thing, right? Yeah. So it used to be codified into law that when there was an impasse, mm -hmm. 
it deferred to the man. It's no longer codified into the law any more that it's deferred to to the man. You would agree with me that's true, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so when we have these great impasses, what happens when neither party backs down? Well, I just think at some point, one party will back down. It yeah, just naturally don't. happens. No, we, like they don't. people, we see nothing. but people Divorce do. Divorce rates are sky high, Yeah. right? Out of, wed, out of, out of wedlock uh, relationships are sky high. Not, people don't even want to take the risk because of this idea that one party's not going to back down. Inside of religious cultures, of course, there's a deference to the man, and you tend to see the more religious a person is, the less they get divorced. Isn't that interesting? Because there's, there's this tiebreaker, right? There's this, when we hit this impasse, we now have somebody who's deferred to, and both people from the religious perspective agree that that deference is gonna go towards the man. But where feminism's, one of their greatest failures has come in is inside of relationships. If we're both equal, who gets to be the decider? when we have a situation where we can't decide. But I think it changes, that's what I mean. I think like it's, it's if you can't figure it out together and if you don't, it, it doesn't go one way or the other, like sometimes one way, sometimes the other way, then yeah, maybe you're just incompatible and you should be together. Yeah, like you're I, not I gonna, see that. So, so I'm gonna reject a couple things here mm -hmm. outright. Mm -hmm. You're not incompatible with somebody because you can't agree on an issue and neither one of you will back down. That actually does not assume that you're incompatible Maybe with not. each other. That could have issues of pride together. It could be all sorts of issues um, which are inside of that relationship that actually have nothing to do with the fact that one of you is actually right and one of you is wrong. But if you would agree, and maybe you don't, but if you did agree that we should defer to kind of reason and logic first, I would think that most people would agree the sex that has that mostly dominated is men. Not that there's not irrational men, there are, or overly emotional men, of course mm -hmm. there are. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, I would say that they're much more rational and logical than women are. Why shouldn't you defer to men? Like, what, what does that cost women exactly in a relationship to just back down on their pride and defer to the man? What does that I really can't. cost them? Well, I just can't assume that because you're a dude you will have the best idea and the, so you know what I mean? I just, I do don't you, see how you can so, assume that because of gender, you, like. Yeah, so you, then you you are agreeing that you make bad choices when it comes to picking men? Everybody makes, oh, what, me personally, if I make bad well, choices? Well, I mean, not you personally, I'm just saying women, then women would have to concede that they're making bad choices when it comes to picking men. Oh yeah, 100%. If, 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 if that is the case that when they pick the man, <laughs> somehow they can't defer to his leadership, yeah, uh, and they have to defer to their own. It seems like they're picking very bad men, right? Yeah, and I think the opposite happens too. I think some men pick really bad women too. But yes. Well, I think that I, well, I would I would say it's an, it's necessarily a trait that if you have a woman who refuses to submit to your leadership, she's a bad woman, no matter what. I would say that that's always bad. Mm. That she's always doing the wrong thing in that case. As long as what you're asking her to do comports with reason. I, I have no idea what the objection would ever be. You're making a bit of a face. It looks like maybe you disagree with Andrew. Do you? In some aspects, I do disagree on certain things. For instance, um, let me see here. Like, um, I, I don't think that just because you're a dude, um, like we would have, like we would have to submit to pretty much your decisions. Um, you have to now. No, we don't. And I, no, I, what no, I, what well, I think, no, you do. So listen, what, no, I'm gonna, what I, I want to explain think. a concept to you real, real quick, and okay. then you can respond. Yeah. Do you know what force what force doctrine is? Do you understand what that means? Say it one more time. Oh my God. Force doctrine. No. Well, the idea here is essentially that all rights which are granted on planet Earth are granted by men. And the way that we know that all rights are granted by men is because we can look not only at the historic standard, but currently right now in modern year, and we can see that every nation on planet Earth, if the men decide that women have no rights, they don't have any. And the men do. And so essentially what happens is women are living based around the benevolence of men who can at any time of their choosing snatch their rights away and there is zero recourse that women have for this 
And so I wanted to, to explain this to you uh, as we go through kind of um, the what I'm going to consider to be a, a, a preamble for your feminist monologue about how, wait a second, we're equal. That's an illusion. There is no equality. Uh, and There's never been equality at any time, any time. And this is the standard globally. Men can take the rights away from women and women can't do anything about it. But the opposite is not true. Andrew, can you do a, can you, um, specify that you're making a a is what clean. is i'm not saying it should be that way he's not try yeah. to understand that i'm not saying we should do that i'm just expressing to you the concept that this is the way things actually are and i can point to you uh dozens upon dozens of nations where that is the case right now not that it should be that way but that it is it is the case that women get their rights from men Otherwise, I don't understand where else they would get them from because a right to me is just something which can be enforced, right? <laughs> well, there was no question, sir. Well, no, I was, I was actually um, gonna let her dive into what she was going to say. I just wanted to give her the preamble oh, I so that she understood, she understood my worldview. She understood what I was, where I was coming from. Yeah, I, I do see where you're coming from. And I feel like, um, or I know, like the Women's March and just like instances where I feel like women have tried to, or like fought for their rights. With it what? Is, it, Foul, with what? It, bad it is language. a matter of. <laughs> what did they fight with bad language? <laughs> oh, please, oh, we want our rights. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what do you think women fought with? What do you think they fought with? Do you think they went and like took their broom handles and went and beat the men over the head with them? They whined in the streets. They didn't fight. They didn't. There was no fighting. They didn't fight for nothing. The act. I mean, that's the truth, right? The act of the march is to pretty much promote like the rights of women, and I feel like in order for that to push forward, it was through the recognition of men that also um, have yep. supported those rights as well and it was a joint effort it's not just simply oh, oh no i agree with that i agree yeah, that it's and a joint that's, effort that's why yeah, that's actually to my point but what happens if men decide it's no longer a joint effort and they decide tomorrow ah uh, men you know what women don't have any rights what happens to women's rights then hmm. guess we'll like, what, let's say a million women were marching in the streets for their rights, and men went, no, you get nothing. What, would we, what could women actually do about that? Good question. That is a good question. I feel like, um, in that sense, we'll never truly never know unless it actually happens, right? Oh, no, no, it, it actually has happened more times than you can count, and it's happening right this second in dozens of countries, where men say, okay, all you women, you're second-class citizens, and you can't do, and you know what they do? Nothing. They can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. It is hard to seek asylum in, like, different countries, um, I feel, and it takes... Yeah, but what, but what if the globe did it? What if the, what if the men of the globe just went, eh, nah, women, second-class citizens, men decided that. Women could never make such a decision. If women collectively tomorrow said all men are second-class citizens, we would laugh. They could never enforce it in a million. How, how would they ever enforce that? They couldn't do it. Only men can do that, right? Hmm. Hmm. That is a good food for thought, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, well, so, so this is the thing, right? Is, um, what, I t what I'm doing is I'm taking the macro, like the, the big picture, and I'm looking at it through the idea of force. And then I put it into the micro too. And so I think in the micro, men are expected to protect their women, to protect their household and lay down their lives before their women are expected to lay down their lives. So on the micro, they're expected to grant women's rights and protect them. And on the macro, they're expected to do the same. But I think that it's always been the expectation that women defer to men because of that sacrifice. That's what I think feminism has destroyed, is that idea. 
I see what you mean. That's all. That's all I was saying. One sec. I'm trying to arrange a little a little pizza here. Getting a little getting a little, Get a little pizza going. Pizza, um, uh, over over Rachel, we were we were having a nice little discussion there. Uh, what are your thoughts there? Yeah. On four stock. I know. I understand what you mean. Like I, I get it, and I also agree with what you just said. Because I mean, it's it's not even agree disagree. It's it is a fact. It's just the case. It's just, it's the, just case, the case. Right? I mean, unless you think about like a super um, sneaky organization of women getting guns, and and even then, like I wouldn't know because then the army is full of you know what I mean. If, I don't know. We went there. Yeah, men are always in the key position. Yeah, course, you know, right? like at the, no matter what. Let's see how. I mean, that what kind of organization? <laughs> but. Um, so I get it, but still, still yeah. under no, but it's still under relationship but still, level. Even though I understand the comment, but st I still have an objection. All but right, I still know, yeah, because I still feel like I, like okay, I, I would trust my men so that it's like I wouldn't I wouldn't like uh, submit to his final decision necessarily because he's just a man but because I trust him and I'd be like okay like you we're not going my way like he's not you know I would probably that yeah I would be like because I trust him and then I would be let's let's do that and then we see that it's not the right thing to do then we we'll, I don't know we can have another discussion yeah. like uh, well, like later that, you know I've heard this uh, many many times I think it's a good it's a good point to say I want to be able to trust the person I'm submitting to, of course, right? Yeah. But I want you to think about this, right? The situation. Mm -hmm. Basically, every man you're ever going to be with, pound for pound, might as well be a gorilla. Smart. At any given time, if they so chose, they could literally rip you to pieces if they wanted to, and they don't. Mm -hmm. They don't. They yeah. could, but they don't. Doesn't? Why doesn't that ever like kind of make women trust men a little bit more that the fact of the matter is is that they really could do that and they just don't do that but i mean the physical the fact that the man is stronger physically does like doesn't change the fact that if i realize you're very messed up in your head and you are irrational and stupid and you are like your decision where, where or whatever you want in the animal kingdom do women get a choice only in this one. But yeah, because, because men defer, humans because are men different. Defer to reason. What's that? Well, humans are different than the animal kingdom. Well, we're animals. Yes, we just, but we, we have, have we have ability, consciousness, and that that that, we that changes everything. Do, well, we just have the ability to use reason, right? And animals don't have that ability. Yeah. And so, through pure reason, which is a thing which, by the way, is pioneered by males exclusively, almost right. There's almost no great philosophers who are females. And it's not because they were barred from it. It's just because they just weren't interested in it. They had a different, different interest in what it is that they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, though there were a few. There were a few good philosophers who were women, especially there's some saints I could point to who were pretty good at it too. Um, but it's through reason alone that men have pioneered this idea of rights, protections for women, things like this. But they never actually had to do it, right? Google they never donated $200. I appreciate that these ladies seem to be open-minded about what Andrew is saying. It's hard to argue with, but some do anyway. But don't be mistaken, ladies. Men very much appreciate you. Yeah. Well, you. I mean, that's of the course. thing, right? It's, um, it, it's not an attack on women to try to get them to, to understand um, the bigger picture. Imagine you're inside of a society where everything is essentially built for you. Everything is built for you. Everything is built and tailored around the comfort of the people who are in that society. All the wires and all the wiring and all the electricity and all the ta everything that you enjoy essentially is built underneath the guise of patriarchy with the illusion, a female illusion of equality. And that equality doesn't really exist. It's never really existed. And uh, the thing is, is that that's a great gift of benevolence that men give to women and women just kind of sneer at it. And it's always been bizarre to me because it's so obvious to any man who looks at it. Well, if, if they wanted to, if we decided tomorrow to be lions, right, um, women are going to do what they... And, and the reason we can demonstrate that that's true is because we can look at the entire world other than the West and see that that is the case almost everywhere but here. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do have an update. We we got the old photos. Um, yo, Craze, thank you. Uh, we have a video to react to, but before we do that, I guess the point I was trying to make by asking you guys about, you know, what would you do for an employer? It's like the same girl who will work a brutal fast food job dealing with a bar, a boss, excuse me, barking orders, cleaning dirty dishes, the bathroom, shitty customers for like $15 an hour. But like, say a, a good guy comes into the picture who has the money to support her fam family and make sure she never has to work a day in her life again she doesn't want to bow she doesn't want to cook she doesn't want to clean whatever it is it's just confusing to me because it's like your husband's gonna ask way less of you than your employer you'll do all the like the cleaning <laughs> the cooking an employer will ask you to do that if you're in like food service or something a lot of women have experienced you know in food waitressing or whatever it is you'll do it for an employer but you won't do it for your husband and that's very confusing to me um or take it further in other if it's you know if we're not talking about like a job that's a bit more physical you'll be submissive to your employer that's a cold corporation your boss but you won't be submissive to a man who loves you and who you love back i don't know it's confusing to me. And the silence would indicate to me that I don't know if you guys agree. Like you've come to this realization that you've all submitted to your to the faceless corporation. You go work for Facebook or Google or whatever. They compensate you well. But at the end of the day, they tell you, be here at this time. Do this. Do that. Sit in a chair. Be good and obedient. If you don't, you lose the job. You get fired. You've traded your submission to men for the cold, heartless corporation. It's an interesting trade. Yeah, but the comparison is like, your comparison is like, if you're with a man, well, that is your comparison, or you're with a man that makes you not have to work. That wasn't initially what you said, you just said, the question was just, would you bow to your men? Sure. Well, I added, without anything, I added but like, some extra details here. Yeah, 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 but that's what I mean. Now it's changed. Now mm-hmm. you're like, if you don't have to. And by the way, by this through this conversation, I'm like, I don't think I, I don't know. I kind of changed my mind about the bow. I think. Oh, maybe. you're against the bow now. No, 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 no. I was oh. against it, and now I'm like, maybe it's not. Mm-hmm. Like maybe as a sign of, like maybe it's not as, but as I thought it was initially, because. I, I'm. I, I, I always just think from my perspective, right? It's like. So, okay, let's say there's a guy, or I mean, I'll even, like, my own perspective, like, if if I'm making $2 million, $3 million a year, and I want to date a submissive girl, and you could be my life partner, and I'll take care of everything, you never have to work a day in your life, you just got to take care of me, and in fact, by helping me, you'll help me earn more money Mm -hmm. by taking some of the pressure off my life. Yeah. So by freeing up time for me, I'm going to go out there and earn just because of you, because you're in my life, I'll go earn an extra half a mil a year because you're making my life easier and that enables me to work more and earn more. Yeah, I get that. But you can do that as a woman and I could come in your life and totally change it Mm -hmm. or you can work for 70K a year, (laughs) Yeah, but nine to five, be here at this time. Wake yeah. up at this time. But I mean, if the if that means if like the money, whatever. First of all, like personally, my value is not necessarily a super super rich guy. But yeah, I would be happy to have. But like my criteria is like if the guy's a dick and then he makes a lot of money, and I'm not, I wouldn't want to submit. But if like you know, m- what I need is a connection, and what I need is like I also need respect. And but I also need to be able to be myself, to be authentic, and to do things that I love. If I'm not able to do the things that I love, like play music or the things that I love really that fills my soul then what what's the point of me being in a relationship if I can be myself and do things that I love and vice versa also I think and I think you don't you shouldn't have you can to play choose music. What? That, that's you what can I mean play no music. because you said you said give up tarot whatever well she does it for a profession to make money so yeah, but she, she loves she doing could it have, so for example she could have a full she could have a day 
uh, she could work a full work week where she's got 10 new clients a day yeah. and she's doing a tarot reading for 10, 20 people a day. Yeah. And she's, that's a full-time job. Yeah. I didn't understand and it a as guy, a job. I understood it as uh, just a hobby. Yeah. Like so she like, has to not do things that she loves. That's, that's the only way I understood it. I'm just it. thinking like if, if you could be involved with a guy mm -hmm. that he makes a million dollars a year yeah. and you can be with him or you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year and be on your own I, I, like i don't know well there's just so many more elements it's it's you know sure. that that's why it's like you just tell me like a guy that's super rich and i don't have to sure i would i mean yeah i would love that i, I think who wouldn't want to not have to work i would actually always want to work I really? Think life without work, there's I, no challenge. It's boring. I personally think oh, people yeah. who are like stay at home. Well, moms, we'll give you 10 years in the workforce. They're really we'll strong. I could not mind. do that. Like, Wait, I, huh? you go ahead. Finish your point. Go ahead. I was saying that I would always want to work because I feel like I would just feel empty that I'm not pursuing something that I love. Do you want kids? I am still kind of debating on that. If I'm well, let's honest. leave that for a second. How old did you say you were? 22. Just yeah, give it a decade, and then we'll see if you want to work or not. <laughs> give it a decade. Some people enjoy Give it working. a decade when you're working and you're grinding for 10 hours plus a day at your job, and then we'll see if you want to keep working. Do you think there's guys who genuinely enjoy working? Like men? Yes. Do you think men genuinely? Yes. Why don't I think, think that most men are hardwired for it, and they uh, they absolutely enjoy it. So you But think they, don't have, they don't have to go into the conflict that women do, the biological conflict of wanting to have a family and childbearing and nesting. Men don't have the same conflict. Women even, do. Even and the other I, thing is, is that even though I know men absolutely love to work, right? I think that they absolutely would love to work on their passion projects even more than working at a job for a boss. So if you were to say, okay, man, you're liberated with $5 million to pursue X, I think that they would choose that very quickly. Okay, but personally, I think like, even if I would wanna have a child, you can, you can childbear and then you go back to work if you really truly enjoy it. Some women, you think there's not a single woman in this world who really doesn't enjoy mm -hmm. working? No, I would never say that there's not a single. I, I would never group anything in a monolith. Okay. I would say that um, that most women, the majority, the vast, vast majority of women have given the choice not to work or to work would choose not to work. Perhaps the majority. And I don't think, I don't think that that's true of men. I think that men would still choose to work, maybe not jobby jobs, but they would still choose to work. Um, but I, no, I don't think most women would choose to work. And this bears out uh, when you ask them if they would prefer to work or not work if they did not have to. Most of them say that they would prefer not to. So do you think, because I always struggle to understand that, because for me, I am, like you say, men are hardwired to want to work. I think that is true for a majority. But for me, as someone who I could not see myself just not doing anything, I constantly have to be on the go. And well, why, well, I think... I think we're speaking past each other, so maybe we can clarify some things. It wouldn't be that you aren't doing anything, but let me ask you a question. Let's take a girl who works at Subway and she says, I wanna work, right? Okay. What the hell is the difference between her making a Subway sandwich for a customer and making a sandwich for her husband? I don't even, <laughs> I have never really understood that, you know what I mean? They're both work. It's just like, why would you want to go work for strangers instead of working for your family? I've never really understood that. Well, it, I, just, it, it just seems illogical and nonsensical to me. I do understand that example. I think it just depends on occupation. Like for me, as someone who, who I want to be a lawyer, that's completely different. If you're, you know what I mean? If, you, if I would, would to be a submissive woman, that would my lawyer skills or my debating skills or solving problem solving would not be helpful at all when, you know, if I'm trying to be a submissive woman. <laughs> Yeah, they would be extremely helpful. So you know, you know why we need really smart women raising children? It's because I don't want really dumb women raising children. So all those women who have the capacity to be really, really good lawyers and doctors and things like this, who have those really high IQs, I'd rather see them at home teaching their children. That's where I'd rather see them for the next generation to turn out uh, all of those great high IQs. I want those women having babies and I want them nurturing those babies and making the next high IQ generation, right? I don't want them wasted away in a cubicle. That seems silly to me. But that's not a waste, wasting away in their cubicle for them, if that's what they truly love to do. 
I do understand. I mean, if you're someone who wants to have kids, if you're a woman who wants to work a high occupation job and have kids, then for sure you got to make some sacrifices at some point of the child's life when you're working that position. But again, it is possible, and I don't think you should put away your passion uh, to raise a kid because that Look, would because that if would, you want to work, if if that's what you feel like you're compelled to do, and you don't actually want to do anything but that, fine. Nobody's saying that you can't do that, right? You can, yeah, and you have every right to. Mm -hmm. But for the vast, vast majority of women, the conflict does not come between I want to work or do not want to work. It comes between I have to work, but I'd rather have a family. That's the real conflict which comes up because we value education uh, over family. That's what we do. That's why women get married in their 30s now because they want to have this uh, social safety net, right? The mm -hmm. safety net of something to fall back on. So the big conflict really doesn't come into play between women who just demand to be at work because they want to be there all day, but rather that they have to work because people have to work in modernity in order to make ends meet, right? But let me ask you this, now that I've kind of given you uh, my view on this, mm -hmm. do you think that if you went down the street and asked women, would you prefer to spend the rest of your life working or would you prefer early on to be able to settle down with a man who could provide for you that you loved? Which answer do you think they'd give? I mean, most likely they would want to have a family and settle down. But that, right. But all I'm saying is that that's my that's my whole point, right? And so, like, I would prefer a society where we made that easier for them to do that, rather than a society which valued sending our best and brightest women not to carry the future generation of children, which only they could do, but rather to slave the workforce underneath a boss that just seems insane to me right so everything is about the choice i just think that there shouldn't be that much societal pressure to have kids if you don't want to you know what i mean That's why why shouldn't there be so why should there be so much societal pressure instead to value uh going to college for instance where uh useless degrees are handed out like they're candy in fact it's so bad the standards have gotten so low that anybody can do it College can't be about rewarding the best and the brightest, or everybody couldn't get through college, but they can. And so the standards have necessarily lowered in order to appeal to the lowest common denominator. A high school diploma is the equivalency of a high school education just 70 years ago. Right. So it's like, why shouldn't there be a national propaganda around a nuclear family and having children instead of national propaganda at wasting your youth and your childbearing years going and getting a worthless degree that almost nobody ever uses? I'd like to know the answer to that question. Because if you're, if you know that your true passion is being in this whatever occupation job that is, and then you're, you have a society pressuring you to have a kid, and you feel like, oh, I, ha I have to do this, I have to sacrifice this. You're always going to regret not pursuing what you want to do, and that kid is going to know. That kid is going to know that you didn't do what you wanted to do. <coughs> and that's, that's, so what? That's so so what? Well, I mean, what do you think sacrifice is about and patriotism? Do you think that many get drafted and have to go to war? Right? That they don't look back and go, oh, I could have done X and I could have done Y and I could have done Z. There is a, such a thing as patriotism. There is such a thing in a nation as a sacrifice for the nation. Why is this idea that everybody must endlessly pursue endless hedonism the best way instead of people uh, pursuing what the greater good for the actual nation is? That seems way wiser to me. If you're gonna if you're gonna propagandize an entire country, why not propagandize them towards procreation? and uh, having nuclear families and things which are really good for the health of the nation. Why not do that? So you, okay, so you're reading that as a grand scheme of things instead of in a particular family. Because sometimes there, there are women and men who have kids and don't pursue something they wanted to do and that affects the family and that causes a generational trauma. Because That's every human being on planet Earth has some pursuance that they weren't able to do. The whole world is filled with failed rock stars and failed artists and failed, you know, uh, professionals of all kinds who chased a dream that they were not able to achieve. I mean, that's most people have some regret of something they weren't able to do. This kind of idea of that because people have kind of unachievable goals that we shouldn't kind of move society towards these achievable things, which most people can do, which have proven time and time again to increase the happiness levels of almost everybody around, that still seems way better to me. 
Okay, so you think uh, for the greater good, it is important to pursue something that you don't want, even if that's going to make you and your family miserable, possibly. Well, so this is, uh, this is loaded. Recognize how you said this, right? If it, if it necessarily was going to make people's families miserable, how could it be for the greater good? That makes no sense. So if it was for the greater good, the most amount of people would find it useful and the most amount of people would find this to be something which they would want to pursue or it couldn't be for the greater good, right? It couldn't be. I'm speaking of... Like, how, like how could it? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you, you were speaking of greater good and the way I understood you were speaking about a nation and perhaps even a world, how it would work better in a world. But then there are mm -hmm. going to be those really unhappy families who just did this because that was the societal pressure. I mean, that's always going to be the case. That's from yeah, saying. Yeah, but you, we're not going to, you, you would never in a million years, for instance, you would never say that there are going to be some people on planet Earth who perform better when they're doing drugs. There are. There's going to be some people who do. You would never say everybody should be able to do drugs because some people who do drugs perform better than others and have regrets they never did drugs. Does that does that even make sense? Would you ever say that in a million years? Of course not. I don't think. I don't, of course not. <laughs> but I don't think drugs would affect anyone positively. To be honest with you. Hmm. No, no. Wait a second. Caffeine well, doesn't I, affect people. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Caffeine and sugar doesn't affect people positively. Oh, that's what I was about to say. Unless you're talking about those things and like. You mean drugs? Like, do you mean something that was prescriptive or just you're going to go... Even prescriptive as well. There's all sorts of, like, for instance, you say you think narcotics like um, painkillers, which are highly addictive, aren't highly useful to society? Of course they are. And so, like, this idea that, uh, oh, wait a second, because uh, some people would have preferred to have been on those drugs that we can't regulate or propagandize against them, that's insanity. It's the same thing at the national level. This idea of endless hedonism and individualism with absolutely no thought to, um, to the, the greater society at whole is pure female solipsism. Men seem to understand this very well. And the men I talk to go, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We probably should move towards those things. But when you look at voting patterns, that's what those things move to. Patriotism, nuclear family, anti-degeneracy, that's what men vote for. Women vote purely around solipsism and let me do what I want, which so is just crazy to me. If, if everyone understands that this is the optimal option, why do you think, especially in this day and age, there's so many people who disagree with that? Okay, I'm going to give you the answer, and you're not going to like it. For one reason, one reason only, because of women's suffrage. Women's suffrage absolutely destroyed the United States of America, and women's voting patterns prove it. And the truth of the matter is, is that women vote, vote mostly against risk-taking. And because they vote mostly against risk-taking, they impede on people's freedoms. And so individual people, men especially, who had the opportunity to vote out illegal immigration, keep the country exactly how they wanted it to be, that was all completely destroyed by female suffrage. Men, if only men had been able to vote in the United States of America, right now the United States of America would be beyond the, the glorious shining example on the hill. It would be beyond that. And the, the voting patterns prove it. Every single time it's a vote for security over the freedom to actually pursue these higher values, women vote against it almost every single time. Okay. And that's what I think. I, I think that that's the primary problem. The primary problem was, um, is, that, is that the two sexes do not see eye to eye on what is valuable. Mm -hmm. And this is why I think that one's going to have to inevitably choose and it'll always move back that way. That all of this, what you see before you right now with egalitarianism, this will all reset eventually. And it'll just go back to primitivism. Men will be in charge anyway. Andrew, you're going to get canceled if you're talking like that, Andrew. Uh, you know, you got to be careful. You're going to get canceled, my friend. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I think well, I don't I don't I've never actually fed. You know who knows this better than anybody? Feminist theorists know this better than anybody else. Feminists are the ones who came up with force doctrine. I just borrowed it from them. <laughs> they were the ones who understood that men at any time collectively could take charge. And there was very little women could do. Feminists theorized all of this. 
They knew all of this years and years before I was ever born, hundreds of years before I was born, in fact. Uh, almost 200 years before, in fact. It's their own writings that I go off of. They insisted, the feminists insisted that women had the right to vote, but when it came to women voting for the right to vote, they wouldn't let them do it because every time women had the opportunity to vote on their own voting rights, they voted against it. Every single time. I do have to move things on. We've been on this for a bit, but we do have one, the video, and then a couple reactions. Uh, Austin? Yep. We'll do the video first. The, 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 the video I sent you, private chat. Oh, okay. Okay. It's just the one we reacted to, I think, last week. Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. Can you, can you show us, please? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. I got away with everything under the last boss, and it wasn't good for me at all. So I want guidance. I want leadership. But don't just, like, boss me around, you know? Like, lead me. Lead me when I'm in the mood to be led. Does that resonate? With, with any of you? Mm -hmm. So you want, I mean, he's talking in the workplace, but like this is what I see when women say they want a masculine man, dominant man, a man who's a leader, who mm -hmm. has leadership characteristics, who takes initiative. You want all these traits, but you want to pick and choose. You want the man to be able to turn that shit on with a light switch. You only want him to be a leader in some contexts. In other contexts, you want him to be a good, submissive boy, pat him on the head. Good boy. It's just interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, just don't, I, I, I don't think anything is black or white, generally. You know, things very nuanced. Well, it's true. Yeah. Like you, you, I mean, if you want to talk about things like that, relationships, like it, it, it just isn't. But it isn't. It's like no, but it's not. It's, it's two not humans. Or... They're very complex. No, it doesn't have to be just one way or just the other way. Like you have two people. It's very complex. And first of all, I think that like you have masculinity and like feminine femininity. Let's say, and everyone's kind of like there on the spectrum, kind of right. So everyone's gonna find someone that's like complementary to them. No, but so, like you, if you ask most women, like yeah. you, they want a guy to take the lead, to take charge. Yeah. In the dating context, yeah. you want the guy to make pretty much all the moves. Like I women do agree don't that women are contradictory. I, I agree with that. I, I know what you and mean. You and you want I agree a man. With that. Oh, uh, like you see these memes. Like I want a guy who's going to say, be ready at 7 p.m. I'm going to pick you up. We're going here. Y'all want that. But then you also kind of don't want, like it's, they're totally mixed signals. And then also you say you want a leader, but like you don't want to follow is the big thing. In order for somebody to be able to lead, if you want a man who's a leader, yeah. you got to be a follower. There mm -hmm. is no, we can't both be the leader. You don't think you can sometimes be, sometimes not be? You don't think you can kind of like you, move you around? Can, to... You can, but... If you want the man to be a leader, yeah. I don't really I think you, you can. If that's what you want. And yeah. If that's what you like. Yeah. yeah, there can be some dynamics like that. Yeah. But if you want, broadly yeah. speaking, and I think women, broadly speaking, want men to be leaders. Yeah. What you're saying is like they're contradictory with themselves. Well, like the thing, you, yeah, and I get like it. Yeah. On a sort of biological evolutionary mm -hmm. level. You're attracted to men who are leaders, who are confident, who take initiative, who are masculine, who are dominant, who have those leadership traits. But feminism has put it into your mind not to be a follower. So you won't be submissive. You won't follow his lead. But you want him to be a leader. You want him to take the initiative. You want him to lead, but you won't follow. Be the leader, but I won't follow you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. That doesn't work. Yeah. Some, if you want a leader, somebody's got to be the follower. And yeah. I can't lead with somebody who won't follow. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that you, you can't. You must not have an opinion. Because sometimes it doesn't mean that you must not have an opinion. Like you're still in a relationship, right? Like I understand your synergy of like followers and 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 a leader. 
but in any leader follower you still have mm -hmm. you're still gonna have discussions you're still gonna nope. just earlier you said no nope. well that's just weird that's just Do not I, being humans if i if we, i'm hold on if i'm the ceo <laughs> if i'm the if i'm the ceo of a corporation yeah and i give a task to an employee yeah it's not the 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 employee should not be like so that's how you want your woman to be your CEO and you just No, I'm I'm using I'm using an analogy to yeah. better articulate a point. Yeah. Um so my no, not a not an employee, but uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. using the analogy because like, she, that's the If the... she wants me to pay for the first date and do all the shit and be a leader yeah. and she never approaches guys, she wants she wants to be approached, she wants me to take the lead in every realm mm -hmm. she wants me to plan dates mm -hmm. everything then yeah then yeah she must not have an opinion then you should probably listen to what i say but if you, you want to listen it, to ladies if you want to start sliding into my dms and hitting me up and paying for first dates and doing all this shit and moving things forward physically and sexually then we can have a conversation about who should listen and who should be a follower who should be a leader I don't, I don't, until I don't point, see how that equates to, to like, not having an opinion, not, not, like... You, you can have an opinion. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, even I earlier you said, like, someone you. that doesn't quarrel. It's like, that's not a relationship. You're oh, going to have quarrels. That, well, I'm not mm, saying... You always... Uh, the there's always going to be discussions. You're always going to have, like, quarrel. you're two humans. Yeah. No, there should be no quarreling. Well, whatever you want to call it, but, like, you're never going to... To want someone who's always going to agree with you, first of all, I would want to be challenged personally. I would want my ideas to be challenged. I would want my boyfriend to want to be challenged yeah. so that we can like find. Because for me, okay, I, what what I know We're is like. We're different though. Men and women are different. They are. They are. Yeah. So. But you guys, no, but you are. But I mean, if you talk about men, let's look, say like you talk. Wait, wait. I got to respond to the. Okay. You want to be challenged in a relationship. I don't, most men, we contend with the world in our lives, mm -hmm. right? The home has to be our peace, right? Yeah. If the home is not our recluse, if the home is not our peace, mm -hmm. and you're quarreling and nagging and just constant, constant conflict yeah. because you're challenging us. That's I, not a good girlfriend. That's not a good. No, wife. I under. Well, that's the thing. That's not a good boyfriend either. And I get that because my ex was kind of like that. But I'm, I'm saying like, you, I, you're gonna bump heads heads sometimes. You're not gonna sure, always. Maybe. You know, like I'm just saying it's gonna happen. But there's a difference between that and like, yeah, always like creating problems, always creating conflicts. I get that. But that's for everybody. Nobody wants to be in a relation like you know, you don't want a guy like that. You don't want a girl like that either. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just a given. But you like to just want to someone to constantly agree with you. It's like when you want you you don't want to you don't want to know if you're wrong about something, or maybe you have to think something through a bit like further, or like maybe there are other options, or maybe I will listen. Like, per <laughs> perhaps, perhaps if you don't mind, I would I would like to just ask you two two very simple questions. The first is. You yourself personally, mm -hmm. would you prefer to have a man who treated you more like an equal or who treated you more like he was in the dominant role and you were to be a submissive follower? Which would you personally prefer? There's no wrong answer. Yeah, I'm not even 100% sure because I haven't had a lot of relationships and I've had bad ones. So I, and I'm being honest, it's not that I don't, I don't want to answer. I'm just not sure what the synergy I would want to be in. Okay. Yeah. So well, maybe let me ask I you the second. Know. Let me ask you the second question. As I understand your answer to the first, that you're not sure. Mm -hmm. Do you think that most men would prefer their women to be in a submissive position or a dominant one? No, submissive. But again, I think what I'm Submit, arguing. Yeah, right. Hang yeah. on, hang on. Yeah. Hang on. I agree. I agree that I think most men would prefer their women in a submissive role. And you agree with me that most would, men would prefer their woman in a submissive role. I think so. Yeah. If that is true then if you look for an equal role where you say, okay, wait a second, we're equals, it's not submission, don't you necessarily narrow the field of, of men for yourself like by an incredible amount, right? 
Yeah, poss- possibly, yeah. 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 So when Brian says this, it always sounds bad rolling off the tongue because we're so indoctrinated into egalitarianism. We're all interchangeable widgets and everybody's equal to everybody else. Clearly, though, you have a bit of life experience. You know that that's not true. Um, so, so the question then becomes, can't you value a person's opinion, but at the same time dismiss it? Can't you say, I value what you're saying, but you're wrong, and I'm going to do this anyway, because that's what's for the greater good of our family. Can't you value an opinion and dismiss an opinion? If, if like, a message comes in there was something covering them up, shit. you can go to the split. No, you're good. You're good. Go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead. Wait, what? Did something? No, he, he, he uh, exited out. Oh. I don't know why he's there. Oops. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. We can't see you. Okay. Something Sorry, happened? Sorry, I was... Something happened? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I don't know. I just lost all audio. Oh, weird. Uh, okay. So I was just... Uh, my, the end of my question is, can't you, at the same time you value opinion... You value an opinion, dismiss it. Yeah, I, I don't see the logic in dismissing an opinion that I value. If I value yeah, your well, opinion, I'm going to think about well, it. I understand. I'm gonna... I value the opinion of my children, mm-hmm. but I dismiss yeah. the opinions of them all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't understand. But as grown ups, as two on, grown ups, how is that? Ill, how is that illogical? Well, that's the, that's a completely different scenario. You're talking about Why? kids because kids are kids and because a- adults was, are adults. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. My question to you was, can you value an opinion oh, okay. and dismiss the opinion that you value? You said, no, that's illogical. But I just showed you how that's not illogical. Okay, yeah. But how do you, the way you value your kid's opinion is like, you know, that kids are, you know, kids and they... It's, yeah, it's well, different not, than the valuing okay, of like your, your wife's opinion, right? We can agree with yeah, that. Yeah, but hang, hang on, hang on. Let's back up. But your concept, I'm not yes. Saying, I'm not saying that a woman is a kid. I was just giving you a, a comparison, a very quick comparison to show you how you could value an opinion while at the same time dismissing it. Yes. You say, okay, this is valuable, but I outright dismiss it. Even though I care about your opinion, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean your opinion is going to be correct, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't see why that couldn't be applied in intersexual dynamics between men and women. Of course yeah. it can be. I guess, yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I that's think, what I'm saying yeah. is, yeah. So if we're, lo- if we're looking at this objectively, when Brian says to you, well, wait, I want a woman who's submissive. You say most men want a woman who's submissive. You say, but I want an opinion. Brian says, well, you should have an opinion. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't be able to dismiss it. I don't see what you're actually disagreeing with. But I mean, also, <laughs> the I think it's the definition of value too, like in the sense of like when I talk about va- the valuing the opinion of like grown up adults, it's like it's it's you value it because it's something that you can't like, actually like think about and like and again it depends on situations but like kids generally like young kids it's like they're you don't value it in something that can be well it's sometimes yeah it could be tangible but anyways yes your concept i get your concept and yes you can dismiss yeah yeah so you I, I get value yeah, yeah, opinion. yeah that, i i get you your completely logic value and, an opinion and dismiss the yeah. opinion at the same time that you value it and yeah. so the, what I what I think happens, and uh, this is just my opinion, but I think we have a lot of sloganeering, where uh, especially under egalitarianism, we think a lot about the slogans of like, "But my opinion matters." It's like, yeah, I think your opinion does matter, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that it's going to matter in every situation, or that it shouldn't be dismissed and dismissed often. Because here's the thing: you and I both know you you're you're 39. You're not particularly young. Right? A lot of people have a lot of opinions that are fucking stupid, right? Like, yeah. isn't that true? They just have a lot of really dumb opinions. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I mean, and, and don't you dismiss those opinions all the time? It's just being stupid? Yeah, but I think we, yeah. like this conversation goes back to our earlier conversation was like, but then we assume that like, because you're a man, then it's better. I think that's where... Well, then I'm going to ask you a couple other questions just to kind of figure this out, right, and see where this leads. Would you say, if you had to make the comparison, if Mm -hmm. you were on the spot, right, gun to your head, 
Which sex do you think is more logical and reasonable, men or women? Yeah, probably men. Okay, well then, by this, <laughs> so, so I mean, then an entailment, hang on, so then an entailment there, if you think that men are more logical and reasonable, and you think that that is so, uh, then why would my position of you should probably follow the logic and the reason uh, be in any way disputed? It seems it seems totally rational to me, right? Well, first of all, I just don't think all men are logical and. I'm not saying all. No, I'm I know. I know you're not. All, I know you're not. Yeah, nor am I, I saying that all women are not. Uh, but more logical and rational. Yeah, men generally are more logical than women. But I and also, I don't. Would you think... rather have a leader who is more logical and rational or more emotional? Yeah, of course, logical, rational. Yeah, but you need, you need both. So if men are more logical and rational. But you need and both. You'd rather have a leader who is more logical and rational, and you think that men would prefer a submissive wife, and you would prefer a leader. That it stands to reason to me that you would want the man to lead, right? Sure. I just, <laughs> my point is just I the way sometimes you talk about the or men talk about it, it's as if or like, yeah, it's as if like we we shouldn't say anything it would like it's it's just it's improbable to just be with another human and just expect them to just never say anything never get into conflict never like because that i think that that uh, i understand what you're saying and to steel man it and you can correct me if i'm wrong what you're saying is you hear a lot of rhetoric from different uh, different places which say okay we're going to just utilize women as objects or opinions don't matter and they need to just do what the fuck they're told at all times day and night right something akin to that yeah if you go to the extreme basically yeah. of like what what we what or what women hear i think and that, i think that's the big pushback yeah but you know generally? who they hear that from they hear that from women <laughs> they hear that yeah, from maybe. feminist they hear it from feminist propagandists Men don't say that. They don't say we hate women's opinion or we hate women and we want yeah. them to all be in, to be in abusive. They don't say that. What they say instead is this is the role that I want, the role that I want for you. I don't really hear women or men ever producing the rhetoric that women's opinions don't matter. Rather, I hear feminist women claim that that's what men say. But I don't yeah. really hear men saying it. Warlord 69, you who donated $99. Ryan 07, Andrew, God bless you. Thank you for shining the light on everything that I used to be blind on. Question for the panel. What is the first thing you look for when visiting a new hotel? What? What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> Bed bugs? Can we agree? Bed bugs? I mean, bed hang bugs. on, hang on. Brian, Brian, wait, 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 wait. Okay, hang on. I got to turn this into something now. Oh, no. Okay. Brian, you have OCD, right? Yeah. Do you take a black light with you to hotels, Brian? <laughs> no. No, but I bring <laughs> I bring my own pillow. No. Oh, no. I travel with my own pillow. <laughs> Not, you know, maybe you got me thinking, maybe I got to bring my own sheets and shit, but that's a lot. Uh, and I will flip the mattress just to check for bed bugs, you know? That's smart, though. 200 IQ. Yeah, yeah that's smart. That's smart. Risk mitigation. Mitigating the risk. What are you doing? Fucking gang signs over there? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. All right. Throwing up something. I don't know. Well, yeah, in any case, I appreciated the convo. I thought it was a, it was a good back and forth. Yeah, thanks. Quick, quick follow-up on this. Um, do you have a... Going back to the sub, being submissive conversation, I want to show Bao video version one before I show Bao video version two. And I want you guys to react to this. Go ahead, if you can uh, pull up version one. Hmm. Oh, boom, yep. I kind of missed it. Was it, did it, yeah. did we miss it? No. Boom, huge Bao. Huge bow. I this is my this is actually my ex girlfriend. We broke up. Unfortunately, she was she wasn't doing enough for me. So I have very high standards. Like so. Yeah, this is my ex girlfriend. This is at my um my apartment. I she was doing good. I mean, she wasn't perfect, but you know, she tried her best. I like I'm a fan of noodles. So could you close the door? Um. So. One more time, just so the bow really quick. The bow. Just hit it. Boom! Huge bow. Bow. Okay. Would you bow for your for your man? 
I would, because yeah. I oh. feel like in Asian culture, it's just a respectful thing. Okay, all right. Would you do it? Um, would you hit a bow? If that, I guess if that was my culture, but no. <laughs> no. All right. Would you would you do a bow for your your boyfriend or whatever? I'm Asian, and so. I would not. I would not bow for my boyfriend. Uh, but may you, I, I? You would not bow. But if okay. it's like, yeah, like, but like again, um, it's not something that I would have to do in my culture to bow to like my significant other. That would be for my elders. No, but like, he asked for it. You wouldn't do it, okay? No. You had something. Because yeah, bowing is up. But I love welcoming my boyfriend, like, because I get excited for him to come home, and I would like so bowing just feels weird. But I would be like, I often like just jump on. I don't know. Just so you would do it. Him. You would do it. You'd have the bow. I wouldn't do the bow, but oh. that would be my bow. I would say, like, because to me that's no, like the he, welcoming thing. No, he asks thing. for the bow. Oh. <laughs> he asks you the bow. Every- I don't know. That's weird. If it's not our culture, that's kind of weird. I don't think that. I, I, it, yeah, he's, I, I mean, he's I think it would ginger. be a joke. It would be, he's a fucking ginger. He's a ginger, and he wants you to hit the bow. <sighs> I mean, that's a very early, irrealistic. Um, what do you mean, bro? <laughs> He's a ginger. What's wrong with... Hold on. They <laughs> bow. Scottish oh, or some shit. Uh, Fucking... I mean... It would be, knights I, I, I see this just as a sarcastic thing, then, like, I probably would do it. Because well, I think it would okay, be Okay, would, would you mind if I just gave you briefly a bit of pushback? Push, wait, wait. Push really back. quick before the pushback, okay. let me just get the yeah, answers yeah. from the girls. Uh, would you Would you bow for your man? No. No way. Really quick, why? I, I feel like it has to be equally yoked in a relationship, and... The bow, I I feel it's almost giving them more respect than they give me in return. Wait, remind me, did you say you want a man to pay for the first date? If he does initiate the plans, yes. Do you initiate plans? No. Oh, you're not equally yoked then, are you? But I'm actually more comfortable in my submissive energy. I don't initiate plans. Wait, so you're more comfortable in your submissive energy. Then why wouldn't you bow? Yeah. Yeah. What? Your dominant boyfriend says... I want you to bow every single time I come through the door. So for me, submissiveness is very different from what traditional people yeah, think yeah, because submissiveness, submissiveness to you means equality, right? <laughs> so I feel that everyone contributes different things, and for mm-hmm. me, I would want a more assertive, dominant mm-hmm. boyfriend, um, and. By that, I mean someone who's more decisive, who's willing to take the lead when it comes to logical things. Yeah, let's get to the butt. Let's get to the butt. But. No, I I just. But. Bowing to your significant other is not what's culturally acceptable. It's not what people. Why, why, why do you defer to things culturally acceptable? Because First of all. Inside of the United States, it's culturally acceptable for a woman to shove a pineapple up her vagina on a screen for money. What? And you're worried about the cultural acceptability of a f***ing bow? Can you square that for me real quick? I just thought this was in relation yes! to culture. Um, however, I just feel that that's not something that I'm comfortable with doing because I'm used to greeting my elders with bows, but not my significant <clears throat> partner. Yeah, okay, so this doesn't really answer to the question that I asked you. You said that it's not culturally acceptable, but it is culturally acceptable first and foremost. There's nothing culturally prohibiting anybody from bowing in the United States. And uh, bows have been something which have been done in deference since early colonial times, in fact. Now, uh, right now, in modernity, there's nothing I can think of which isn't culturally acceptable. It's culturally acceptable for men to put on strap-ons and walk down the streets during certain parades. And yet somehow this, the idea that culture somehow is the prohibition, that's insane to me. What is not permitted here, in fact? I can't even think of one thing that every perversion I can think of is permitted. How could that be a barrier for entry to you bowing? So when I said culturally acceptable, I did misspeak because I was going to get at the point that as someone who is Asian, I do, it's a part of my culture for us to bow to elders. And in relation to that, I'm more used to how it's done culturally. And I just do not see how it's related to like relationships. And I don't think I owe them that bow, even if they were to ask that. Wait, may I? Ju- or sorry, go ahead, Andrew, if you want to continue. No, no, no. You you, you can jump in. Oh, okay. Um, 
Question, do you want to get married one day? I do. Okay. Um, do you have any expectations on, you know, your boyfriend or whatever at the time? You want him to get you a ring, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. How much should he spend on the ring? It doesn't matter for me. You'll, you're fine with a cubic zirconia from Amazon? Sure. Okay. Um, do you want him, when he proposes, or would you have an expectation that he get down on one knee to do it? Yes, because I do like some traditional values. Uh, wait, so hold on. You want a man, by the way, I think getting down on one knee is way more of a bitch move than stay, staying standing and just going like this. First off, if the guy's got bad knees, that's a big fucking ask. But you want a guy to kneel for you, get down, look up at you like a little bitch. Here's $3,000. Here, I got a fucking right here. Um, please. Please, will you marry me? Fuck that I shit. Still th I still think it's way better to just bring up the example that most women will get on their knees and allow a dude to jizz on their face. That like, was going to be... I, that seems wait, to me like yes. that's way more that's degrading not most. than <laughs> doing <laughs> bow. I'm just saying, wait, like, that's, that's way more degrading than a bow. What, what do you want me to say? Well, yeah. Andrew, th I, was, I was just getting to that, so... Have you ever given, have you ever S the D? <laughs> have you ever S the D? I don't feel like I want to share those kinds oh, okay. of Okay, she's S, oh my God. <laughs> Heaven forbid a woman gives a blow job in 2024. Oh my God, a blow, what, 1800s? Oh no, okay. <laughs> Fine, you don't do it, but the same woman the same woman that says, I would never bow for a man, will suck a guy's within 30 minutes of meeting him. That's a fact. I don't know what I'm... That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's there every day! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! <laughs> <sighs> it's also coming from... What is the intention behind him wanting me to bow it to greet him every day? What is the intention of him wanting you to insert his phallus into your mouth and then expel some jizz, bro? Bro, it's crazy to me, bro. These girls will suck. They don't want to hit a bow, huh? Hold on. Huh? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Well, I mean, you're talking to her. She, she's not that. And you're talking about. I don't There's think it's most women, anyways. Wait, she, you're, you're saying she, she hasn't. Um, no, but like she doesn't necessarily. You said like within half an hour, you would just like go with the guy and like, as the D, but then wouldn't want to bow. I'm not saying she did that. Yeah. But I'm saying like. Some girl. You yeah. ever had a one night stand? I have. How many? Oh my gosh, I would say two. Do, 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 Sorry, do, how many? Two. Do, do, two. Do. Like, how, so how quick? Like, and w how quick? What do you mean? From like meeting them to. Maybe a couple to several hours. So you'll let a man penetrate you. I just don't but, see how those are, they correlate to me because sexual the sexualness of everything doesn't correlate to what I find respectful because I don't think that having sexual relationships with someone equates like what your values should be in a relationship I think you're allowed to have those opinions be nuanced I just don't understand like there's so there's this objection to well, I would. I, I, well, I get it, though, Brian. Okay. I understand. Right. Look, you're totally right. It's perfectly acceptable for you to have nuanced needs inside of a relationship. I can totally understand my logical, reasonable brain that you could enter into a one night stand with a guy, a little blast a little all over your face, but not want to bow to the man of your dreams, right? I mean, what man wouldn't want that out of his woman? Honestly. I mean, I don't even know what you're arguing with here, Brian. She's absolutely right. I don't, I just don't get it. I don't get it. 
Goat donated $200. She's gonna swallow but ain't gonna bow. How do you like my nuance? Thank you, Goat. I appreciate Goat emojis in the chat for Goat. Thank you, man. Appreciate the TTS. I Look, I just don't get it. Like, you'll do all this for a guy. And maybe it's quirky. Maybe it's unorthodox. Maybe it's a little out there. But if you like this guy, and he's got this like quirk or whatever, and he's like, "Hey, I want, I want to see you hit the, I want to see you hit the bow when when you greet me," you don't even have to do that shit in public because that be, that might be a bit embarrassing. You should still do it, but whatever. And he's like, "Yo, I just, I, I, I want the bow." You're not gonna do that for your man. Would you bow for your woman? You're not gonna do that for your man. No. The love of your life. He's perfect. No, you gonna bow. You gonna bow for no. Woman, <laughs> what are you talking about? Why, why would any guy ever bow wait, for a woman? Wait, wait, wait question. Why he's perfect. Him? He's your perfect guy, but he's got this one, in your view, red flag. But he's perfect, and he'll never cheat on you, and he's awesome in all the ways you'd like a man to be awesome, but he wants you to bow. Do you pass him up? I do. That is the most arslerd shit I have ever heard. I'm s <laughs> you perfect but he wants you to bow and you're submissive what so, else are you not going to do for him then i don't see how that makes me r word because i have certain expectations when it comes to relationships and there are certain things that i won't compromise on such as being submissive i don't think that you making someone bow and them disagreeing with it makes you not submissive submissive just because you're submissive does not mean that you lack respect for yourself. Wait, so you would you would bow to other people though? It, yes, it's my. Can I ask you a question? You you wanna you wanna work a job, right? Mm -hmm. You wanna like have a job, a career. Well, maybe not a traditional job. I do want to become like an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so, if you could have a job and it paid $100,000 a year. And the only thing you had to do is you were a greeter at a store. And the requirement was you had to bow to each guest who entered the store and just greet them. Oh, hello, welcome. Would you take that job? So yes, because of the money. Gotcha, bitch. Well, I don't uh, think so, really, because if you think about it, there are certain things that men will never compromise on because it will go against their pride. So just because a woman's perfect does not mean that he would always do wait, things that so make let's say, okay, let's say a woman, I'm trying to think what a sort of such a benign request from a woman would be of a man, but he gets his perfect woman who will be loyal to him for the rest, of, give him children, but she has one benign request that's just kind of a little, oh, that's a little, I'm trying to think what I it is. I can think of one. What is it? Maybe like if she requests him to always get his jacket off and, you know, lay it out front all the time for her and for her to sit down, like a lot of men would disagree with that. In return, he gets his perfect woman. But I, I feel that a lot and of that's men... And the, that's the mountain, the hill they die on. Right, but a lot of men aren't willing to do something that makes them seem vulnerable, and especially in front of other people, in my opinion. I guess my question would be for you. You got your perfect woman, right? Mm-hmm. Would, would you let her hold it like a hose when you pee? <laughs> every, time um. you, every time you pee... Would you let her hold it like a hose? She's like, I want to I don't see think that. That's, that maps on one-to-one -to, -one to the bow. But, uh, she, so I have to go and get her every, if I'm at fucking work, babe, come to fucking work so you can hold my dick while I pee? No, like, like you could just do it like Once a home. day? You can do it at home, you know, like you, you don't have to see anyone. It doesn't and have to be And she's the perfect woman? She's the perfect Yeah, I'll make the concession. It's a little strange, but fuck it, yeah. <laughs> For the perfect woman, yeah, you can hold my dick once or twice. I invite. Well, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It. Yeah. Why not? It's weird. It's. I don't. I think that's a bigger ask than the bow. But sure. Yeah. I think it depends on the intention. Bro, I don't know if you guys know the definition. Actually, of I would like perfect. to get into the intention. What do you mean the intention? What like, is the intent? 
Yeah, no, if you it's think like the intention is degrading. No, no, no. Well, that's what I mean. If like if if it's I don't know, it can be a little fetish, I guess, or it can be like this is in his culture like a welcoming thing that that's different. If it's like I'm the king and you are my slave Beneath me. type of feeling. No, no, no not like slave. Weird. I don't get. I don't, why does it always have to be uh, such an? Extreme? No, but I'm just saying if. The, but that's what I mean. I mean, if that's the intention what if, of like. What if he just says, "I'm the king, and you're not the king. And yeah. I want the bow, because that's how you show me respect when you come to my door. For me, personally, I like the bow. You hit the door. I like the bow. Now I'm going to give you the Western equivalence of this. Yeah. You may think this is silly, but you know what I really like my wife to do every once in a while. Right? I've never told her this, but I still like it anyway. A, good, a nice curtsy, you know? A nice what? Isn't that isn't a curtsy? What's a curtsy? A curtsy. A curtsy. Like, a curtsy. Oh, you that's... You don't know what a curtsy yeah, is? Yeah. Like a little... Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it's your thing, that's fine. What's wrong with a curtsy? Hey, man, if it's your thing and if that's your, your, you're both like comfortable with that, like I have no problem with that. You've never curtsied? I don't, I mean, probably sarcastically or like, I've, I mean, not in a like serious, uh, I owe you like respect type of way. Is that what, I, I wouldn't know yeah, when, well, when I would I do that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's respectful. Yeah. I think uh, no, I've never done that. For 15 hours a day and he's in like the most god awful conditions possible to bring home the bacon. I, I don't yeah. see what's wrong with a curtsy. I do. I would do it differently. Like if I, yeah, if my boyfriend has been working all day, like I'm going to, I love welcoming my boyfriend. So I would go to the door and hug him or I would I'd like to have like you know but have you something you cooked for him curtsy. I mean honestly yeah maybe I'm just thinking like it depends yeah. okay well I mean that's just the bow it's just the bow maybe, maybe the bow too yes. maybe the bow what too what if I said the bow fills me with the drive to go out and fight the world to provide you a home and food to prepare us just makes me 102% instead of 100% you still wouldn't then yes Yo, we got we got a piece of party coming, boys. Um, huh, we'll we'll do the roast session too Oof. while while everybody gets a little little breather room to uh, eat. Really quick, hung around the table though to finish this off. Would you bow for your man? No. Bow for your man. If it's Conan O'Brien, yes. Conan, o that's right. Conan O'Brien, Anissa. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I think do, you used to say no, right? No. Oh, she's. Oh, okay. All right. Mm, Yo, Davon Jackson. By the way, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Oh, you had something? Wait, you got something? No. What you got? No, Guys, we're going to lower the TTS here to $20. We're going to do a roast session. Give me a second, boys, to get that going. Uh, Austin, are you able to get the messages typed out, or do you want me to do it? Which messages? I'll do it. I got it. It's all good. Save that. I'll read that one later. I'll get them pulled up later. Guys, so roast session while everybody eats their pizza. Before that, though, can we play that bow video 2.0? Bow video 2.0. We'll continue the conversation though on the being submissive, the bow, blah, blah, blah. But bow video 2.0. Do you want uh, audio? Uh, it's just really quick. Just play it, I guess. Yeah, sure. But we might have to mute it. Or is it music? Yeah, it is music. Okay, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, this is. Okay, what do you guys. Ladies, this is a little, but there's a twist. Would you do this for your man? Hold, yep. Yeah. Hold on. Oh no. What? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. What the fuck, dude? Oh wait, there's no. We didn't. Okay, we did. We didn't have. We didn't expect that. <laughs> somehow the there was no thing showing on the video. Whatever. Like our reaction. Do you know what I'm talking about, Austin? No, there's nothing. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Um, Does anybody want some? Oh yeah, does I'm somebody good. not want pizza? It's pepperoni. No, I don't. Uh, I don't want some. Don't? Don't. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen on whatever, dude. Why would you ever play that? <laughs> the beginning's good though, right, Andrew? The beginning's no. good. No, no, the twist ruined the entire movie for me, bro. But what if the guy loves washing dishes? What if it makes him feel strong and powerful and that's how <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, we have a word for those men. We call them bitches. <laughs> so I asked before, you didn't really answer, would you bow to a woman if that she was the perfect woman for you? 
Hmm. If she wanted that? It's an interesting question. No. It didn't know it is. Here, I'll give you my justification for it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that men are supposed to submit to women. And it's an act of submission. But not only is it an act of submission, it's a, it's a sign of respect. I don't think that men should be bowing to women ever. But ever. It's, but it's also a sub submission to, like, like this guy said, to pull the chair out and hold the door open. I don't think that that's submissive. I think that that's a sign of respect, absent submission. You, don't, you wouldn't consider those things a submission? Here, no. the, to make this question fair, I would like you to ask me, because putting, to Andrew's point, that is it more submissive. So you'll have to ask me a question that would be more gender appropriate, and I'll happily give you a yes or no. But you can't just reverse uno the question. So but give me an ask from a woman for the perfect woman that would be gender appropriate for me to do. But why does it have to be gender appropriate? People are different. People have different ways of showing love and affection and respect. Well, well, well just because to... even within the worldview of there being 10,000 genders, Brian most assuredly takes the gender of the traditional he, him, right, under this paradigm. And so even under the paradigm of those who believe that there's a thousand genders, they would have to show respect to the particular gender which the person is allocating to themselves, right? I wasn't speaking about that there's 10,000 genders, there's two. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm not saying you were, I'm just saying even assuming there were inside of that worldview, you would still be a, assigning the respect portion of it to the gender the person assigned themselves, right? That's why, that, so, so either way, it's, it's, um, it's like a double-edged sword. So either he's the traditional masculine or assigns the traditional masculine um, and not traditional in the sense of I go for tradition, but traditional masculinity, uh, if that is the case, he assigns that self or assigns that to himself uh, whichever way inside the other worldview or his worldview, you would still be showing respect through that, right? Okay, so you're just speaking from a traditional masculinity standpoint. Yes. Just from that. Okay, I understand that then. Well, because so I think so to your question, I think like if she was going to ask you something that's like gender equivalent for you, I think it would be something emotional. So something as to, so the bow would be Wait, a respect. Scoot the mic to the edge of the table, please. Okay. So uh, the bow is like a respectful thing for you. And for, I guess for you to the woman would be something like um, you have to listen to her talk about her day. And lit. For 10 seconds? Uh, yeah. The, for 10 seconds. Which is about. Yeah. Three, four, five yeah, times yeah. as long as it's. I'm just saying, like, yeah, that, that's what we the equivalent, right? Sure. I have something once emotional. Day, once a day, yeah. once a day, I will listen to her for ten seconds. So there you go. I just feel sure. that would be sort of the. Not a problem for the perfect woman. You know what, Andrew? I perhaps I'm going to get flack for this. <laughs> dating is difficult. Dating is complicated. There's a lot of, I mean, to. I think people don't underestimate what perfection is. For the perfect woman. You ask if I would bow, and I was a bit hesitant. Uh, I wouldn't bow for a woman, but for the perfect woman? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get flack. <laughs> There's not a lot of perfect women out there. In fact, I don't know if there's any. I will take the concession. I'll hit the bow for the perfect woman. Okay. Happy to hear that. <laughs> What? And Ashley McKee. Yes, Andrew. What? <laughs> yes, dude. I subscribe to your channel. Eh? I don't want to work full time. I rather raise the children. His hobby is a band and spends roughly 1K a month on it, so I need to work so we make the bills. I love her show. Yeah, that sounds like an investment. So that's a whole different thing. Nope, you should still submit. It's an investment. You're hoping that his band makes it big so you never have to work again. Stop the cope, Ashley. Uh, but uh, thank Brian, you, thank you, I gotta add back to this. Yeah, no, let's uh, let's get into it, Andrew. What? I I actually see in in order to secure her, I get the perfect woman handed to me on a silver platter, and all I have to do is bow, do one bow. But otherwise, hold on, Andrew. Here's the entailment. The entirety of the rest of the relationship, she's perfectly submissive. She doesn't quarrel. She's beautiful. 
feminine, all the traits that I want. Giant fucking giant Guinness World Record book lar labia. <laughs> yes, Andrew, I will take the concession. This woman does not exist, Andrew. You can't pal, bro. Okay, but she literally lets me rest my feet on her back while I watch you can't, TV. You can't, you can't, you but can't the one, so the weird. hold on, you can't, you can't pal. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being, I'm being extreme here, but I'll do it. You can't pal, Andrew. No, 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 no. But Andrew, you're gonna have let to take the L on this. Let me give you Andrew, my rebuttal. Let me give you Andrew. You got to take the L. I'm sorry, but okay. I don't give, care take, if take you show L. up every single night to the best food you've ever had, to the best sex you've ever had, to the most submissive woman who's ever existed, and she loves, she loves you to death. She will die, take every bullet for you. She will lie to the FBI on your behalf. She will help you bury the dead body in the backyard. Mm. You don't fucking bow. Do you no, Andrew? I'm sorry, but. I'm sorry, Andrew, but okay, here's the trade off. So I don't say I don't accept the perfect woman. Then I must accept a flawed woman, correct? And in some way, she's going to challenge. It's already me. a flawed woman if you're bowing to her. There you go. That's the entailment. That's the logical entailment. It has to be already imperfect, an imperfect woman if you have to bow. That is the logical syllogism. So. Everything so else perfect is perfect. Woman, hang on. She's perfect in every <laughs> conceivable way, except you have to bow. Therefore, she can't be perfect. Therefore, you can never bow to a woman, Brian. Done. Done, bro. Perfect, but I have to bow. That's it. I got to do a little wait, fucking wait, bow. Wait. Then, then she's not perfect. That's the entailment of the position, that she's not perfect. No, but okay, Andrew. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can prove this. I can prove this. I can prove this logically to you. No, you can't. But go ahead. If that perfect woman was perfect in every way and you did not have to bow, would you prefer that woman over a woman who was perfect in every way but you did have to bow? Well, yes, sure. Well, then we have discovered there's an imperfection and therefore the perfect woman cannot ever exist if you must bow. Therefore, Andrew is right and you just took the fattest L of your career. No, sir. but hold on. Let me, <laughs> let me just fucking rip out my chapter three from debateuniversity.com <laughs> you son of a gun here i got you andrew because the perfect woman but that's it but. but you have to do this which in in the hypothetical presented would suggest that she is perfect but this one thing so then you're not so okay, but this doesn't make any sense because you may, you're already making the claim she's not perfect. So why would you bow you're for the woman? You're overthinking it, Andrew. The you're initial, overthinking. Hang on, the initial premise Ashley McKee was that. $100. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is the investment more important though? My kids are one and two, and we have a third on They're the way. Ashley, I just want to give them the time they need so they grow up well. Thank you for your criticism. Thank you, Ashley. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to criticize it, you. I'm just trying to point out that, um, yeah, that's that's an investment. And, yes, you should submit either way. Andrew, Even if you're the primary breadwinner, you should still submit because that's still an investment. It's Andrew, still an investment. Andrew, can I ask you a question? Andrew, let me ask yeah. you a question. Thank you, Ashley. Right, I appreciate right. it. Thank you. Andrew, you, you're, a, you're a proponent of marriage, Christian man, orthodox Christian. Yes, I am a proponent of marriage. Now, yes, would, would you have any quarrel with a man kneeling to propose to his girlfriend? Hmm? Yeah, I don't. I don't think you should kneel to propose. Yeah, but they. But men do. But men. Yeah, do. I think they probably shouldn't. I well, I agree with you there. Well, I don't know what, what what's the quarrel. Right? Well, okay, then I was hoping you'd say, eh, you know. You were hoping I would take the uh, alternative uh, well, position. You know, you knew what, but, but look, I'm just saying, look, okay, well, okay you're trying to get me on a technicality. Gonna, gonna, I'm going to grant it. I'm going to grant it. I'm going to grant it and say Andrew Wilson thinks you should. That's not so, an active submission. Okay. That's so not, then, it's not an active submission to kneel to ask for the marriage because what you're actually doing, right, is you're saying, listen, this is the one time in my life that I'm gonna show you some vulnerability 
as I ask you for this great leap from you. The one time ever. Now, if this motherfucker got on his knees every other day to propose, you would agree that there's a problem there, right? But like, one time, one time. Like, if you said to me, Andrew, I bowed once to the perfect woman, that's different. But you said you would you would bow. No. You would bow whoa, 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 to the whoa, whoa. perfect woman. <laughs> what? Like, she's going to hit the door and Brian's going to bow, bro? You're gonna I'm bow? not going to allow you to gish gallop, Andrew. You <laughs> gish gallop her. You're going to... Hold on. You want me to answer the question? I'm going to answer the question. Okay? Answer You're the question, gonna get, bro. Now, back to this. Back to this. Okay, so back to this. So, Andrew, here's the thing, right? I would rather live die on my feet then live on my knees and you're in favor of kneeling one time i would rather die on my feet and as if you bow you're still on your feet boom roasted lawyered <laughs> boom okay okay so hang on hang on uh if you propose with a bow just Gerald donated one hundred dollars. Would you recommend that Ashley, then that men if you stop with a bow, to Brian. send in TTS messages, you'd probably have to work less. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it. What, what if what if a man proposed with a bow? Is that okay then? Because he's still on his feet, Brian. If he proposed with a bow? Yeah. So he instead of getting on one knee, he bowed his entire body over and held the ring up like so. Would that be Would that be okay? And then you hold the ring, hang on, hold the ring straight up above your head, and then bow your whole body over. And you tell, is that, is You're shifting that, the goalposts, shifting the goalposts. Yeah, can you do that? Can you do that, Brian? Is that okay? Shift it, sh you shifted the goalposts. Logical oh, fallacy. no, bro. I Logical think I'm fallacy. In the goal post. Logical fallacy. Logical <laughs> fallacy. You, you need verbal combat, honestly, Andrew. You, you, you should take your own course, bro. I did debate myself recently in law, <laughs> by the way. Do, should we do it again? Wait, can we do it? Oh, uh, Austin, yes. can, can we have Andrew debate Andrew really quick? Just super quick. Let's have, maybe we have, we should probably have Andrew or Austin do this. Okay, okay. Hang on, hang on. Save it towards the end. Save it towards the end. We'll do it towards the end. Because I have a topic I want to debate. I, <laughs> he's got to reverse it. Transform. <laughs> Transform. Uh, flip horizontal. All right, and then I think hide one. No, no, we have to save it for the end, Brian. We have to save it for. I have a topic on this. Oh, right? okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Never mind. You yeah. can. Well, hide, hide. Go back to the split. Just hide them. Okay. Well, look. Okay, so Andrew, <laughs> you're trying to tackle me here. You're trying to tackle me on the word perfect. You know what? I'll just go ahead. You mean and, yeah, okay? Well, I'll so no, the, I'll grant you. My... I will grant you. Perfect I'm... means without flaw. <laughs> okay. So. But here's the thing, in this scenario, here, here, I think here's the difference. The woman isn't asking me to bow. So the scenario is, I'm making a deal with... Wait, you're making a deal? Okay, I'm not making a deal with the woman. I'm making the deal with a genie, and there's a genie in a bottle. And the genie says, the genie says, Brian, I will give you the perfect woman. She does not request this of you, but you must do it. You will have to well, bounce. Then, hold on. Then no, 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 you got Andrew, I'm not gonna allow you to I'm not gonna hold on. You gotta let me finish here. All right, you gotta right, let right, me let you, you gotta let me I'm finish sorry. my point. All I'm right. sorry, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so Andrew. The genie is the sort of arbiter, the 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 executioner of this tragic, tra tragic burden on me to bow to this woman. But it's not the woman who is requesting me to do this. The genie has created the scenario. In order for me to get this perfect woman, I must do this. How can, in this scenario, the woman not be perfect? Well, this is actually a great question. I'm going to answer it for you. Your premise is flawed. So the genie could not actually grant the wish. The wish, this is illogical. The wish is for the perfect woman. If the genie says, great, I'll give you the perfect woman, but you have to bow to her, then the genie could not give you that woman because she would not be perfect. Yeah, you know, I, that doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. It doesn't Fair make enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but so what... Okay, let me ask you a question. If you were if you were talking to the genie, what about her would not be perfect? Okay, well, I'll, I'll answer your question. From your purview of what you consider the perfect woman, if you had all of those qualities, plus you didn't have to bow, 
but you also had all those qualities, but you did, which of those women would you take? I would prefer to not have to bow. Well, then we already know your criteria for the perfect woman. But that has so nothing to do. Genie, so hang on. So if you ask Other the genie that. for the perfect woman, if you ask the genie for the perfect woman, then the genie says, I'll give you the perfect woman, but you have to bow. He's not giving you the perfect woman. Therefore, the premise uh, is flawed. Well, hold on. He is giving me the perfect woman. He's giving me an imperfect life scenario. There's nothing With wrong. The imperfect woman. With the imperfect woman. What's that? Hold on, Andrew. Wait, wait, wait. Woman. Okay, let me ask you a question. So, okay. if a genie says, I'll give you a million dollars per day, but yeah. you have to do a bow, or the genie yeah. says, "You ha I'll give you a million dollars per day, and you don't have to do the bow, do you not get the million dollars per day if you take the bow? You still get the same thing. Uh, well, wait a second. No, you don't. Because if you say, no, I won't take the bow, you don't get the million dollars. Is that correct? That would be correct. Yes. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, it wouldn't be the same thing. So you're getting two different criteria here. The first one, you bow, you get the million. The second one, you don't bow, you don't get the million. Well, hold on, Andrew. Let me ask you a question. What if, a, okay. hmm, I don't know if this is compelling, but... Uh, a, a perfect woman, her standard for dating a man is that he uh, he needs to earn a million dollars a year. Okay. <coughs> I have not th thought this one through. Hold on, let me think. <laughs> is Those she, analogies on the flyer. She, she's a perfect. She's a perfect. She is the perfect woman, but the man is does not does not earn a million dollars a year. Is yeah. she no longer the perfect woman, despite his own inadequacy? No. She, wait, she is or she's not? She's not. She's not the so perfect she would woman. Still be a, she would still be a, the perfect woman, uh, despite this inadequacy. Because entailed in the premise is she's the perfect woman. She wants the perfect man, but the perfect man must make a million dollars. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. <clears throat> Andrew, listen. <laughs> listen, bro. We're getting caught up on the word perfect here. Let's get back to <laughs> yeah. the let's get back perfect to means the without flaw, right? You okay. agree? Let's get back to the spirit of the conversation, right? Now, right. you've managed to derail the conversation with this hyper focus on the word perfect. I get it. <laughs> I get it, Andrew. Listen, you're a master debater. I get it. But <laughs> Let's get back to the, 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 the spirit of the question, which was, okay. would I bow? Submit. A Andrew? Andrew? Would I, the perfect woman, I just have to bow and I get the perfect woman? Yeah, I'll do it. That's it. Okay, but in the entailment there is that you think the perfect woman wouldn't make you bow, and so, therefore, if you think the perfect okay. woman wouldn't make you bow, it can't be the Here, perfect woman, let, Brian. Just, just for, the, just for simplicity, simplicity's sake, I will go ahead and grant you that she is imperfect now. Okay. But she's... So you will bow to the imperfect woman, Brian? <laughs> oh, Andrew, you, you trickster, you. Andrew, you little trickster. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're a little trickster, Andrew. She's... She... Wait, Andrew, what about this? She's the imperfect woman. She's perfect in every way, except this one. Will you grant okay. that? Yeah, so if, so if you're saying that in every other way than the way that she makes you submit every single day to her, she's perfect, I can grant that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I, so I would, then, yeah, I would hit the so bow. Then, so what you're saying is that you will submit to the woman who you think is perfect even though the imperfection of her making you submit makes her imperfect, you would still submit if she had all the other criteria other than that, right? Look, man, I know you're doing your Tai Chi, Judo, or whatever. <laughs> you're, you're overthinking this, Andrew. You're overthinking this. You're trying to get me to be like, just to, to basically admit that I'm a soy boy, okay? I know what you're doing. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to clip. You're trying to get a little clip. Here's the thing, Andrew, listen. Well, let me ask you a question real quick. Is bowing submission? 
I would look. Do you uh, you bow to a king? Sure, that's you would be submissive. Yeah, yeah. I would bow. I would bow in deference to men who were above my station. Sure, if I was in feudal I'll even, Europe. You know what? I will grant it, Andrew. I will gra- grant that bowing is submissive. Go ahead. Okay. I'll grant it. So I just want. I just want to make sure we got this on record that there are cases where you are going to submit to women. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Hold on, Andrew. Be precise in your language. I will submit okay. to the. The penultimate the perfect, perfect woman. woman. You will, penultimate. You will submit to the imperfect woman. No, no, no. Pe- hold on. You got to use my language here. She's the penultimate perfect woman. You know what penultimate is? I know it's a big word. No. Big word, Andrew. Penultimate. Secondary ultimate. I think I... Hold on. Let me Google So that. you would... Okay. Got it. So you would submit to a less than perfect woman. Next to last? Wait, fuck. Last one... Last but one in a series of second last. Wait, hold on. Second to last, yeah. So okay, I, I, so let's uh, use the word. So let's use the word in reverse. That... Supersede. So supersede. You would agree. Supersede. I know it's a big word, Brian, but you would agree that the word supersede means to come before. And so if we're talking about perfect, and we have perfect, and then second perfect is less than perfect, and you would admit that perfect supersedes less than perfect. You would bow to less than perfect. That is correct, Andrew. That okay. that is correct. But let Andrew, let's say I don't accept this scenario. I don't accept. I refuse to do the bow. And in so doing, in so doing, in reality, I end up with a woman who is orders of magnitude worse yeah. than this supposed just slightly less than I- imperfect woman. Is it yeah, I'm worth? not fucking bowing to a woman, bro. Andrew, like regardless of the circumstances, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to bow my head to a woman. I'm not ever going to do it. And even if that meant that I was in a worse situation than I was before that, I'm not bowing my head to a woman. Okay, let me give you. I'm going to ask you a question, Andrew. I'm going to ask you a, a comparison. Okay. So, mm-hmm. woman. If it's under threat of cover, if it's under threat of coercion, if that's what your hypothetical is, no. then yes. No. If it's under threat of coercion, okay. then sure. Let me ask you a question, Andrew. So you have two women. Two women. One of the women, and you, you have to pick one. Okay. Okay. One of the women is an atheist, liberal, feminist, obese, um, BPD, bipolar, depressed, on a slew of anti-psychotic, anti-anxiety, anti-depression drugs... She is infertile. She's a mm-hmm. biatch. Mm-hmm. She, her name is Andrina. Destiny. De- sure. <laughs> it's Destiny. She has pink hair. She has pink hair. Yeah. The physiognomy is. She's it, she's heinous. It's bad. Yeah. Um. She again, atheist woman. She'll never mm-hmm. convert to Orthodox Christianity. Yep. She's did I say infertile? Yeah. Or but you never have to bow to this woman. Never. Yeah. Never. And all things else are And she evil, smells. Right? And she smells. Hold so on. Hang on. Sorry. Well, all other thing. Okay, go ahead. So <laughs> now, all, but all other things are equal. All and other, my choice is between that or the perfect woman, except she's not perfect because I have to bow to her, right? Well, hold on. Let me paint the picture for the other woman. Okay. The other all woman, right. beautiful, fertile. Orthodox Christian virgin will give you seven sons. That Bible verse, I don't know the exact, I don't recall it. <laughs> Children in a man's youth are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Okay? She'll give you seven sons, Andrew. She's a babe. She's hot. Submissive. Yeah. Submissive, Andrew. Feminine. Beautiful. But I have to bow to her. But. Once a day, you got it. Three seconds, you got to hit the bow. Which woman do you pick? Mm-hmm. And, and I just want to make sure all other things are equal. What What do you mean? All other so, things are equal. So everything else remains the same except these two conditions. The two conditions? There's a lot of conditions, Andrew. Yeah, I know. Except, well, the, except the differences between one, woman A and woman B, everything else stays the same. Can you could you give me an example of yeah, what so would not be? Yeah, so woman A, the heinous woman, 
I can pick between her. I can pick between this golden goddess who's fucking fantastic, except I have to bow to her. But everything else stays the same. What what would everything what would everything well else? there's no can do like the world isn't flat in this scenario there there's still an outer space there's still stars in the sky there's nothing everything else external to this stays the same I know you're trying to get I know you're trying to do something Andrew but sure okay well then great then I'll take the heinous bitch and divorce her Andrew you trickster you First off, <laughs> I asked, bro. I asked. <laughs> you okay? Let me. Okay, hold on, Andrew. <laughs> I asked, bro. I did. I mean, now th this is this is a perfect example of your 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 bamboozling trickery here, Andrew. <laughs> let me let me. Oh my goodness! You must. You can't. There's no divorce. <laughs> And oh, you, okay. Now there's so okay. So then all things aren't equal. Okay. So okay. The, the, hold on, Andrew. It's implied. It is implied. It's that, not implied. That's implied. You little. Oh, let me do a loophole. Can I divorce her? No, you got to pick one, dude. You got to pick I one. I just I told you who I would pick, and I told you why I would pick her. Because you could divorce her. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Let me. Okay. Just care. I'll, I'll engage with that a little bit, but I'm not going to let you get away from this, Andrew. So okay, Andrew. Sorry, ladies. Um, <laughs> so, but you have to consummate the marriage. Yeah, then I consummate the marriage and then divorce That's this. Andrew, I can't, but you would, you would have s carnal knowledge of an obese feminine. <laughs> yeah, that's The insane. crucible, the crucible. Clip that, sh clip it and ship it. Andrew will have carnal knowledge of an obese, pink haired feminist who smells. I'm sorry, I'm clip sorry. Clip it Wait and ship it. That's not what you said. You said consummate. Isn't consummate? Isn't that? You know what well, I mean? Well, no, sir. In the night of your wedding, if you can't get it up, you are still consummating that marriage. Okay. You know what? You have I, know, to... I tried to give you all these conditionals that you could have changed. Andrew, you know. You're being a little. You're you being said a little consummate, trickster. Brian. Not have to have sex with. Let me just Google consummate. Hold on, you you trickster. Google consummate. Let me just make sure consummate. Make the Andrew, you little trickster. Okay, I googled this. Make a marriage or relationship complete by having sexual intercourse. And then go to go to Daphne Daphne ah, and two. You know go what? Daphne and two. No, no, because I'm happy with definition one. And I'm yeah. No, go to Daphne no, and two. <laughs> no, Andrew, we're uh, uh, no. <laughs> this is this is the agreed upon definition of this word. Well, there's multiple agreed upon definitions of the word, which is why there's multiple definitions, Brian. This is this is the accepted definition by the broader public. It's one definition, yes. Well, yes. Okay, well, then, and Brian, this was the definition I was using. You can never get married to a woman if you can't get it up. Andrew, I use How the do word you consummate, consummate such a marriage if you can't get it up? No, but Make complete by mm -hmm. having sexual intercourse. So sure, but this, how? But wait a uh, second. So you're da, 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 da. any marriage, any marriage where the guy can't get it up. This guy, it's not consummated. According to definition one, technically, mm -hmm. if you can, if you don't have sexual inter, technically, according to this definition, that is correct. It would not be consummated. If you have a different definition, that's fine. But I'm using yeah. definition one. Well, and I'm going to go with definition one. I'm going to grant definition one grant in it. its entirety. Grant it. What is sexual intercourse? Does that mean vaginal penetration? Andrew, do I need to bring you back to health class here? Yes. <laughs> well, that, it means vaginal penetration. For the purposes <laughs> of the, for Andrew, you're being I, you're you're being a little. Shifty. I want to make you're sure. Evading. Is it va if it's vaginal penetration? I'll just grant it, Brian. Is. Can we stop with the the pedantry? Okay, here? okay. You know what? You're, you're being pedantic. I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna say it's vaginal penetration. Well, then entailed in your scenario, just this tip. woman, we would never be able to consummate our marriage because I would never be able to get it up. Therefore, we could never get married. Just I'm trying months. to give you all the bones in the world here, oh. Brian. Oh, but hold on, Viagra, Sildenafil. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna f you, we're forced. You get forced Viagra, Andrew. 
Yeah, but do you? So this is why it's very important that we get into the details. Does the man have to ejaculate for it to be consummated? No, he doesn't. He doesn't I, have to ejaculate. According to the definition. So basically, I just no. have to sit there while this beach whale rides me, and then I never have to bow to a bitch the rest of my life. Yeah, I'm fucking taking that deal and divorcing that chick the next day. But you don't get another woman. You don't get another woman. I'm still divorcing that chick the next day, and I'm going to become a monk. How about you can't divorce her, and you got to smash once a week? <laughs> Wait, so I have to I have to have sex with this chick once a week? Yeah. Like, we, yeah, so, under the, <laughs> so under the hypothetical, right, under the hypothetical, I just want to make sure I get this right. Either I bow to a woman or I have to be with the most heinous whale person who's ever existed and be put on Viagra and have sex with her <laughs> once a week. For, now, for now hang on. I just want to make sure. Remember I told you earlier when we were talking, I said... It, does any of this have to do with coercion? And if there's coercion, I'll always say yes. Brian, how the fuck is this not coercion, sir? You might have got me there, but... Yeah, that's coercion. But, so, yes, under coercion, under absolute coercion, yes. Tell you what, But Andrew. that's total Let's change coercion. It. Change it. <laughs> Let's change it a little bit. Okay, Andrew. Mm -hmm. So, you don't have to have sex with her, mm -hmm. but... That's your wife, and you can't divorce her, and you have to stay with her. And, uh, okay. And, Got or, it. And, and all, hang on. And all conditions stay the same. Andrew just, oh, my. Andrew. I just want to make sure. All conditional stay the same. All just, external conditionals stay the same. Look, so I get like, it. You, you, want, you want a fat feminist. I get it, dude. I fucking get it, dude. But go well, ahead. Hang on. If all conditionals stay the same, then I would still take her, and then I would go to a different country... And then I would come back without her. Different country. Mm hmm I mean She would get she would get lost in the jungle, you know? You'd you'd murder her. No, I didn't say that. Oh. I mean what I'm sorry, Brian. What, am I willing to do something bad when I'm forced by a genie to marry a fat, heinous feminist? who I have to be forced to have sex with every week. Oh, Andrew, you would do something about that? Oh, what a terrible guy. <laughs> First off, uh, to, be, to be fair, to be charitable, you wouldn't have to go to another country. You could just go for a walk in the woods in Michigan. Okay, it's not I that. didn't say, it, well, okay, what, the reason I would go to another country is because I would renounce my U.S. citizenship and then divorce her in that country. That's why I asked if all things would be equal, Brian. Andrew, this is so bad faith. It's so bad faith. <laughs> so bad faith. <laughs> so bad faith. Okay. So last question, and I, I, the, the girls are – I got to get the girls back. Okay. Well, we gave them a nice break anyway. Yeah, you know, I, you know they've had a chance to recharge here. Okay, final right. question. So okay. the choices between these two women, you can't go – you can't – bring the woman into the jungle or the swamp or whatever i don't know mm -hmm. uh you gotta stay with them uh i yeah you can yeah you gotta stay with them uh you can never find another woman even if you i give you the grant the whole divorce thing whatever you can't get another woman and this okay. is assuming you don't have kids mm -hmm. per uh almost perfect the woman I described previously, mm -hmm. or the woman? Yeah, I'm taking the woman and that I can get the divorce from. I'm and not just, bowing my head to a woman. And then that's the end of your bloodline. Yeah, even if it, even if it, even if it meant for all future men that they could always take a look at this one stupid asshole from Michigan who took the worst deal possible and made sure he would not fall on his own sword. So that he would not have to bow to a woman. And all men took their lead from that forevermore. I would take that deal, yes. You know, Andrew, do you remember earlier on in the conversation when the women over here were saying, I'm going to be better looking when I'm 70. Andrew, yeah. that's you. Wait, I'm that gonna... you can... I'm going to be better looking when I'm 70? No. That the level of deluge. deluge? I'm sorry. You don't. 
You sound that's ridiculous, Andrew. Just Jim. No, I think it's one hundred dollars. All right. This intermission was brought to you by <laughs> Debate University. Become the master debater today. Yeah, let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. All right, guys. Hang on, hang on, Brian, Brian. I'm Brian. I'm dying a hero, Brian. I'm dying a hero. I'm not bowing the head to no fucking I'm not doing it. I'm not ever gonna bow my head to a woman. You know what? I've gone forty years without bowing my fucking head to a woman. And, and no matter how many genie bottles you come up with, I'm going to find the flaw in that contract. I ain't bowing my fucking head to one now. All right. Hey, you know, look, it is what it is. Um... I already see that this is just going to be a woman shrieking at the top of her lungs about something that she's emotionally attached to. Here we go. Here we go. If I was in the room right now, I'd just be like, ah, uh, like just, uh, I'd just start twitching. Just, 